In 2014, the Swiss Dealers of Death had 113 defenseless Ukrainian civilians murdered. With Swiss high precision sniper rifles by the Swiss company Brugger und Tomet during the Maidan uprising, which I explained in this video here from 2014, when I was already eight years ago backing up the Ukrainian people with my solidarity through my videos. It's on my channel, Gatsefrats, here's the title. Ukrainians murdered with Swiss sniper rifles by Brugger und Tomet, Switzerland at Maidan Square. There's an interesting video as well on the same channel the about the Swiss military industrial complex. You have no idea what a death dealers they are. You should also watch this famous video here with one and a half million views about the infamous Swiss crimes, where you can see the Ukrainian Berkut Nazis of the International Octagon just before the massacre with Swiss sniper rifles of Brugger und Tomet on defenseless Ukrainian civilians. So here's the title, I can't read this here, Death Squads Massacre, and on uh, the channel of Roman Sukan. I'll put the link in the description for you. I made some screenshots of the video footage of the, uh, the Maidan massacre, massacre. So here you can see the Berkut, they're all hiding behind masks just before the massacre. And they're standing with Swiss Brugger und Tomet sniper, sniper rifles, high precision sniper rifles, like a Swiss clock, you know. And we should ask ourselves now, where are these Berkut state killers now? eight years later during the Ukraine war. Well, I can tell you for sure that these coward assassins are not at the front line risking their own necks. No, sir. These are the ones I've been telling you about. This is the enemy within of Pharaoh's nobility who kill easy targets from both sides of a war, and they change uniforms all the time, from national uniform to enemy uniform or peacekeeping uniform, and so on. And in fact, they changed uniforms quicker than a pink list killer changes her, his, or its tiny pink underwear on a Paris fashion show. I mean, look at Hugo Boss fashion designers, where Nazis, pink list killers, the fashion world, and crimes against humanity all come together. Ain't that so, Sir Elton? So here we see Hugo Boss, a fashion designer who created all the Nazi uniforms. And this guy here, the pink list killer, he likes to visit fashion shows. And he's doing the hand sign, the secret Freemason sign. And here's the Poroshenko, the butcher of the Donbass. It's all about killing the patriarchy. They all get together at a fashion show in Paris. Isn't that charming? You all thought I was joking about the Berkut fashion killer police and their pink undies, huh? Well, I ain't joking. 
I'm dead serious here. So here's another screenshot of that video and you see a Ukrainian Berkut enemy within killing Ukrainians with a Swiss sniper rifle of um, Brugger und Tomet. All these uniforms are in fact for hiding into an anonymity and for intimidation, like when a police control, show me your ID, meaning I dominate you, like a sort of a mating call for them, where they literally screw us in all senses of the word. And all countries have them, this enemy within, changing uniforms quicker than on a fashion show. So this is another screenshot of this, this uh, video from eight years ago, where the, the enemy within was using Swiss sniper rifles and killing on this day 113 Ukrainian civilians. You can even see they got bags with Swiss crosses. It's brand new, you can see this, you know, with a Swiss cross on it. So, are they Swiss? I think it's very plausible that this is Octagon and that they are really Swiss. Or maybe they just got a whole lot of bags together with those nice and fancy Swiss sniper rifles. And you can really see in the video how they're hiding their faces. They don't want to be filmed. And it was probably the last time that it happened. You know, they took serious measures. So no photographer would come near to them or nobody filming them. And um, this is so typical for the enemy within, you know, changing uniforms, having masks. They don't, they, they want to stay in the dark, you know. Oh, by the way, I cannot comment anymore. This is what happened. This is an actually actual screenshot. And I got this here. I couldn't move any of the buttons anymore. So I'm logged in with this here. And it was on my own channel here, Gure, and um, for hate speech. Oh, it's, it's a complete lie. They, they, they just don't want me to uh, comment. So we're in a perfect dictatorship, you know, and they hide everything, you know, under masks, under uniforms and fashion shows. It looks all nice, but it's, uh, we're in the middle of a dictatorship. Eh? Look, here it says U Blocks. This is their logo in red and white Templars colors. It says U Blocks AG, AG, which is uh, Swiss German or German, and it means Aktien Gesellschaft. And uh, it means they have, it's a company with uh, shares. So now in 2023, the Swiss are murdering defenseless Ukrainian civilians again by the Swiss u blocks company from Talville, Switzerland, who sell the GPS navigation chips to Russia for the Russian Orlan 10 drone. So, with the help of the Swiss, the Russians can precisely navigate their drones to kill the Ukrainians and their children. Look, here it says, this is from the newspaper, Putin's drones fly with a Swiss chip. And here's their flag. So here it says, dealers in death. And this is the Swiss chip for the GPS of for the drones, the u blocks AG from Switzerland. And of course, the Swiss u blocks company says, 
Oh, sorry, we didn't know that people were killed with this Swiss high precision product. Just as the Swiss Brugger und Tomet sniper rifle company said, Oh, sorry, we didn't know. Just as the World War II Swiss Nazi banks said, Oh, sorry, we didn't know. Just as the Swiss Darfur Genocide Pilatus Airplane Company said, Oh, sorry, we are neutral Switzerland. We didn't know. And I made this film about it nine years ago on my channel Gatsefrats. And here's the title. The Swiss Darfur Genocide Airplane from Pilatus, Switzerland for Chad Sudan and low-cost dictators. Just as the World War II Swiss Erlikon company said, Oh, sorry, we didn't know. We are Swiss and neutral, you know. I made this film about it nine years ago on my channel Gatsefrats. And here's the title, Swiss Argentina Nazi Connection, British killed by Switzerland's early con 35mm sky guard in the Falklands. And they also, the Nazis or the Germans, they also used it during World War II. They had um, early con uh, flak, flak that means Flieger Abwehr Kanone. It's a German word. You all thought it was an English word, eh? And now the second video here, it's also Erlikon about the owner. And just as the Swiss owner of that same Erlikon killer company said, Oh, sorry, I didn't know. I had a looted Nazi art collection. And I made this video about that seven years ago. It says nine years ago, seven years ago. And the title is Burle Erlikon, same company, looted Nazi art collection and Swiss arms trafficking, the war makers from Switzerland. Or the Swiss Mebo company providing the precision timers for the Lockerbie bombing of 1988, saying, Oh, sorry, we didn't know. Oh, you know, Scotland was so far away, and so was Libya. And I made this a video about it seven years ago. Here's the title, Switzerland's Lockerbie bombing by Swiss Mebo was a Nazi solstice sacrifice, uh, 88. And um, oh, it was on a solstice as well. <laughs> and here's the Mebo company. It's the same as the chips in the uh, in the Russian drones. They got the precision parts. They they all come from Switzerland. Uh, nobody ever talked about it anymore on my channel. Gatsefrats. I put the link in the description for you. Oh yeah, I forgot about it. The here it says December the twenty first, nineteen eighty eight. It was Panem Flight one hundred and three, uh, with two hundred and seventy people uh, died. Uh, you can see what's left of the airplane. Not very much. You won't survive this. And um, yeah, it was another winter solstice ritual, which the Swiss do a lot, actually. The same happened on December the 21st, 2015, where me and my family, we got terrorized by the Swiss police for the whole day. Uh, that was the day I really had to leave Switzerland. And some pink list killers, they wiped out an entire family on December the 21st. Well, the police, they should have been there. And instead of that, they were just terrorizing me and my family. Just for no reason at all. And um, the Swiss do that a lot. You know, it's, 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 um, it's an evil country. You have no idea. And at the same day, the, uh, the house of uh, the moment I was safe in France, 
on December the 21st, 2015, um, the house of uh, Alistair Crowley, um, the Bolskine house, it burned down in the, um, yeah, also in the, um, in the time of December the 21st. And you won't, so this is in Wikipedia, and you won't find a single word about the Swiss Mebo company who delivered the, um, the timers for the, um, for the bombing. Because apparently the, uh, they, always, they always get the precision stuff, they get it from Switzerland. The Russians do, the Libyans do. The whole world is doing it. The Nazis did it. They all do. You know, the Nazi U-boats, all their precision instruments for the torpedoes, it all came from Switzerland. And you won't find a word about this anymore. The Swiss had the, the, the Berger report. You know, they, they rubbed it all under the carpet. You know, that's what they always do. So I forgot about it. It was a, a solstice ritual. And um, they always do this. Or the slave ships, mostly belonging to the Swiss, bringing the Nubian slaves to the Americas, and the Swiss saying, Oh, sorry, we didn't know. We are the land of the Geneva Convention, Human Rights, United Nations, and Red Cross. So nobody else will know except we ourselves and i made this film about it six years ago on my channel Gatsafrats, and the title is switzerland owned african slave trade slavery ships of swiss navy of the templars and it's all because of the knights templars they had a huge fleet you know to bring all the people over to jerusalem and they still had the fleet, and they still have today. So that's why a um, a landlocked country like Switzerland, they had this enormous fleet, and they were the owners of the uh, of the slavery ships. I put, I even have the names of the Swissies who were the owners in this video here. But hey, nobody talks about it. Hey? Or Putin's wife, Alina Kabayeva, whom you can see here, and living in Geneva, Switzerland, together with all the Russian oligarchs. And the Swiss saying, oh, sorry, we didn't know, etc., and so forth and so on. I made numerous video about the Swiss Oh, we didn't know crimes. And here you can see Alina Kabayeva. That's the uh, Mrs. Putin. And they have two children and they live in Geneva, Switzerland, as if nothing ever happened. And you know, in Switzerland, the base of death dealers, this is the most common phrase you hear all the time when listening to a swiss conversation in a bus in a tram a train or in a bar oh i'm sorry i didn't know you hear that wherever you go in Switzerland. then who did know about the swiss sniper rifles and Swiss GPS components killing Ukrainians. Well, the NSA, the CIA, the MI6, of course, as they know everything and spend billions of dollars on the knowing game. Which means that the Ukrainians are getting betrayed by the Americans and by NATO as the Iranian Shahid drones murdering innocent Ukrainian civilians are literally full of US components. 
It says Shadows of Betrayal, NSA. Looks like the same birdie birdie like this birdie birdie. The same fiery eyes of the birdie birdie like this one here. Eh? And as Swaziland can reel and deal under the Schengen Agreement of the EU European Community, the Ukrainians also get betrayed by the EU and by NATO as they all carry their part responsibility into the murdering of Ukrainian citizens and their children, letting the Swiss dealers of death freely provide Russian Orlan 10 drones with Swiss high-tech precision GPS navigation components by the U-blocks made in Switzerland. So here you can see the Swiss High Command, where the Swiss generals have the slogan of the Knights Templars on their military arm patches. Unus pro omnibus, omnes pro uno, meaning one for all and all for one, which is the same as where we go one, we go all. Proving furthermore that the Swiss octagon is giving all the orders to the US. So here it says unus pro omnibus omnes pro uno, meaning uh, one for all and all for one. That's the other way around here. And here it says K D, -D O O P C D M T O P C D O O P. So let's look it up and see what that means. And here we can see the three musketeers, and there were in fact four. So this means the concept of three and the concept of four. So inside the story, it says square and compass. So this one for all, all for uh, all for one, and where we go one, we go all. Unus pro omnibus, omnes pro uno. Well, it's all Freemason stuff, people. So there it is. I found it. So I just punched this K D O O P. It's the whole thing here. I punched this in the uh, in the search machine, and this here popped up. This is the. Official Operations Command of the, there's a, a, a Brigadier General here, of the, the Swiss Army, the Death Dealers. So here you see, uh, very sophisticated computers, or oh, they know everything, eh? Here you got the Swiss Cross, here you got the, uh, the, um, the Swiss Pike, which they got from the Knights Templars out of the, uh, from the Crusades. And with the Swiss bike, this is by, you know, the Swiss mercenaries, they were real killers, murdering millions of people in the Middle Ages. And they had these Swiss bikes, which they got actually, it was an invention by the Muslims, by the Arabs, which they hid under the sand. And when the Crusaders came, they, they pulled it up and the horses, they all ran into the, the bikes. And when the Knights Templars, they found it, Switzerland, they uh, well, they brought the um, this military te technique with them, and this is how simple Swiss peasants they could miraculously uh, raise up, rise up against the all-powerful uh, Austrian Empire of um, oh, I forgot the name. Well, anyway, Habsburg, and uh, w w which these simple Swiss peasants, you know, they, they could never have have gotten this, this uh, new uh, military techniques on the European battlegrounds, which was never seen before. And they got it from the Knights Templars, right? And that's why we got all these Knights Templars in it, together with the Knights Templar Pike from the Muslims, and they had an alliance with the Muslims, that's why we got them all here. And it says, the, the Knights Templar saying all for one and one for all.
it's all together in the symbol, yeah? So don't have yourself fooled by all the nice fancy stuff and patches here and, and the blue war tie and you see how sophisticated they are. I mean, this is the Swiss high command who are actually giving the orders to, uh, to NATO. So you really think that the Swiss Templar high command don't know about Swiss sniper rifles going into the Ukraine? about Swiss GPS components in Russian Orlan 10 drones in order to murder Ukrainian civilians and whatnot? Well, of course, the Swiss Templar High Command knows, and they even helped developing these drone GPS components of very high Swiss precision. Of course, they all know. And this Swiss High Templar Command gets paid very high salaries for to know. In the richest country in the world, with the highest salaries in the entire world. It says again, Putin's drones fly with the Swiss chip. And here's the Operation High Command with the Swiss Templar Pike and the, the Templar slogan and all. And yes, they know. They even helped developing all this here. Dear Ukrainian people, you're getting lied to by NATO, by the Russians, of course, by America, by the EU. They all lie to you. Look, here's an email. Why don't you send, send them a nice email? Eh? Maybe thank them for all this. But hey, Mr. Putin brings a lot of money into the Swiss Nazi Templar hideout. And his gymnastics wife, Alina Kabayeva, lives in Cologne, Geneva together with their two Putin kids, who were born in the world's most expensive maternity clinic of Santana in Lugano of the Tessin Canton. So the Swiss High Templar Command can at least turn a blind eye on some Swiss killer drone GPSs and on some Swiss sniper rifles, murder weapons. I mean, Knights Templars and big financial business have always been two inseparable things, since the Knights Templars were the first multinationals in history. They invented banking and they founded Switzerland, as you can see here. So, of course, the Swiss High Templar Command knows about Swiss weapons killing Ukrainians. Because Swiss Templars and the huge Swiss military industrial complex are one and the same thing. So, here you can see Alina Kabayeva, Putin's present day wife with the uh, sort of a, a half swastika behind it. So she's advocating the war, saying, yeah, let's go kill the Ukrainians. And here's the guy with his pharaonic hammer. Here you can see part of a Swiss drone here. So I really don't understand why not President Zelensky is not taking out his pharaonic mace take a flight to Geneva, Switzerland, and has his pharaonic mace persuade that lovely Geneva Putin family to come and live in a nice jacuzzi apartment in Kyiv, Ukraine. Because then the war would be over and no more need for Putin to buy Swiss GPS for his drones 
because he wouldn't like to bomb his wife and children staying in Kiev in that nice jacuzzi apartment. So the official name for this thing here is a mace, M-A-C-E. So Zelensky, why don't you take out your mace and get her into Kiev, eh? It is another phony war indeed, just as the one in 1939, which was all also playing in Eastern Europe in Poland. Another phony war in the same area. It's funny, isn't it? Next to Geneva's Putin's nest, there's yet another nest of the same evil in Geneva. You all should know. The Bible says in the book of Revelations, chapter 2, verse 13, that next to the charming Putin nest, also Satan, lives in Geneva, where he has his throne. Wow, I guess you'd almost need a Swiss drone GPS to find that one, eh? So here you can see Saint Antipas on the left side with a lot of Swiss crosses on his cloak. So this is a Swiss cross. It's a white cross on a red underground, which is the same as here on Saint Antipas. A white cross on a red underground. And this is a very old painting here. Maybe it's 2000 years old. I don't know. So there must be a reason that 2000 years ago they put this on his cloak. Now, what is the reason? Well, I'm going to tell you the reason, and it says in the book of Revelations. And I quote from Revelation 2 13, chapter 2, verse 13. I know where you live, where Satan has his throne. Yet you remain true to my name. You did not renounce your faith in me, not even in the days of Antipas, my faithful witness who was put to death in your city where Satan lives. So here it says that. You know, this is Saint Antipas with the Swiss crosses. That where Saint Antipas, where he was put to death, Satan lives there and he has his throne. So now we only have to find out where was Saint Antipas, where was he put to death, where was he slain. And if we find out that, we know where the throne of Satan is. How was Saint Antipas of Pergamon killed? First of all, Per in the Demotic Pharaonic, it means the house, like a royal house. And Ga, or Ka, it means the soul. So it says the house of souls. This could be On. Perka on, on is Osiris, but I should need my books to completely translate that for you. But there's no doubt about the per. You know, as soon as you find this in a in an ancient name, it's pharaonic. And furthermore, I'll let you read it all by yourself here. You can punch pause and here it says. Mark Anthony gave Cleopatra all of the 200,000 volumes in Percamon's library for the library at Alexandria. So the pharaohs were there, you know, of course they were. And so here about Saint Antipas, the traditional narrative continues by stating that Antipas was put to death during the reign of Nero. It's like 50 in the year 50. So that's 2000 years ago. 
burned in a brazen bull-shaped altar at the Apollyon Temple in Lyon, Geneva, Switzerland, and buried in a nearby cemetery. So he was slain in Geneva. And uh, so, and I already told you this uh, about Switzerland. Interesting, Geneva, in French, the name is Geneva, and that means Jeanne de Eve, Jean of Eve, Jean of Eva. And what did Eve do? Well, she talked to evil, to the serpent, well, concerning what, what it says in the Bible. And uh, so it's all, you know, it's, it's got all written Swaziland and Pharaoh all over this uh, a biblical story where apparently Satan has his throne. And I already told you that uh, the devil has his throne in Swaziland, that there are the seven hills, or also seven mountains, the seven Kurfürsten. And they have seven heads of state. Everything leads to Switzerland. Oh boy, I lived there for 25 years. I know how evil they are there. Oh boy. And here too, I'll let you read it yourself, but um, people start talking about it, you know. And here it says, just look at all the organization that point to a one world government in Geneva. All these are in Geneva. One world government, ein Reich, ein Volk, ein Führer. It is in Switzerland. So here's some more about the um, where Saint Antipas was slain. About Apollyon the Destroyer. A large portion of CERN is located in the territory of Saint Genis Puy in Geneva. In Roman times, it was called Apolliacum. The town and the temple were dedicated to Apollyon, the destroyer, Shiva Horus. And here um, in Revelations 9-11, ah, 9-11, okay. And they had a king over them, the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in Hebrew is Abaddon, but in Greek he has the name Apollyon. <clears throat> Here it says, CERN is loca located where the ancient temple of Apollo was located in Revelation 9-11, and they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit. Uh, well, the same thing, Abaddon, Apollyon. So apparently, um, Saint Antipas was slain in Geneva. <clears throat> Well, with the devil, the Putin nest, and CERN in Geneva, what can go wrong for the Swiss octagon? Maybe Homie Ross coming in between? And that's exactly why the Swissies are hyped up to fanatically aggress and terrorize recalcitrant elements like that stubborn South African. Who got chased away from Satan's nest in the Alps, while all big criminals are welcome to come and live in Geneva and in the rest of Pharaoh's neutral base in the Alps. The black sheep must be kicked out, and this is what Swissy actually did. Unanimously, thoroughly and very tightly organized. So the black sheep is Sean Ross, he gets kicked out by the neutral, white, clean Swiss and the big criminals who want to kill Ukrainians and lots of other people, they can stay because Swaziland is the base of all evil. Also, FIFA's Sepp Blatter likes and welcomes the Putin nest in Switzerland because Sepp Blatter is a real sports-minded person 
who knows how to transform the sweat of the slaves into hard cash and Swiss dollars. And well, Alina Kabayeva is a top sports female, which means a lot of cash for a sports-minded Swissy like Zepp Blatter. Funny enough, in German, Blattern means to lay down cash in order to buy something or bribe someone, where Seppi obviously got his name from. Well, with a hot shot like Swiss Sepp in your wife's sportsman circles, nothing can go wrong, Mr. Putin. Though she does remind me a bit of Eva Braun with that brown swastika-like thing she's backing up. So this is Eva Braun, the wife of Adolf Hitler, and this is the wife of the other dictator, the wife of Putin, Alina Kabayeva. And this in fact is like half a swastika. So we see here two gymnastic girls in pink, both backing up the swastika and Nazism, and both married to a dictator. So hey, what's going on here? Funny, actually. How come all these dictators seem to fancy these gymnastic girlies? Or is it the other way around, maybe? That gymnastic girlies feel attracted to brutal dictators. So here on the left hand side you see Eva Braun, dictator girl number one, and here on the right hand side you see dictator girl number two, Alina Kabayeva. And it seems she's doing this half a swastika with her legs, just as the Putin symbol of the Ukraine war. Or can you believe it? It seems to be a mutual attraction between dictators and gymnastic girls, where one does a split and the other splits up the people and their skulls. So here you see dictator wife number one, um, Eva Braun, and uh, here the other one, dictator wife number two, Alina Kabayeva. And she seems to be saying like, my husband, she, he's going to take the world all the way to the west and to the east and all the way down to the south. I mean, that, that's what they did, eh? the Nazis. They tried to get England to the west, Russia here to the right, and all the way to North Africa. Well, that's what it says. It's a T. And the other one here, dictator wife number two, she is saying with this image like, well, my husband doesn't really know what he wants to take. You know, look at this. Look at the mess. It's not like a leg here and a leg there, you know. My husband doesn't know what to take. That's why he took the Ukraine. The more there's war and bloodshed and the man dying, the more the girlies dance. Because of the Horus Matrix, you see. So here on the left hand side, you see dictator girl number one, um, Eva Braun, the Hitler dictator girl. And on the right hand right side you see dictator girl number two, the Alina Kabayeva, the Putin dictator gymnastic girl. And uh, there's a lot of things going on simultaneously here. So we have to worry about this. When we see things going on simultaneously, we have to ponder, analyze, and most of all, worry what's going on here. For those who'd like to ponder upon the possibility if dictator Putin is a descendant of dictator Hitler, I can assure you that the little one on the right 
definitely inherited Hitler's fancy for gymnastics girlies, as the dictators themselves are fervent dancers. So, and guess who that little one here is? That's George W. Bush. Uh, you, it's a very rare picture where you can see them dancing together. And for these Russian sort of square dance, Putin, he seems to have put on his uh, cowboy boots here. And why do they call it square dance? As in fact, they're going in circles and the compass makes a circle. So it does say square and compass, you know, the square dance. And you see Mr. Hitler also dancing when the war started. And yes, now we're going to kill the Europeans. He was so happy that moment. And these two here, George Bush together with Putin, they're so happy killing the Europeans. Oh boy, are they happy. And both liked the word Wagner. And Mr. Putin here, he surely inherited the Wagner stuff from Mr. Hitler. Mr. Hitler, he loved Richard Wagner, the music of Richard Wagner. He was a big uh, anti jaywalker living in Switzerland. And um, so he was always dancing, listening to Wagner. And here too, they're probably dancing to Wagner. Oi, what about me? Oh yeah, Georgie, of course, you too, you love Wagner. Eh? It's all the same stuff as your wife family is also from Switzerland, eh? from that castle I filmed for you. It's all related to Switzerland. Wagner, George Bush, Hitler, Putin, all of it. Or maybe the vile dictators and their loved ones have been cloned or reincarnated in some Swiss temple, having all their former tastes and preferences back for the next terror round on humanity. So here you can see Mr. Hitler and this is Mr. Putin. Or maybe this was Hitler and this is Putin. Well, these guys too, they all look the same. When I was living in Switzerland, the streets were full with these Swiss Nazi posters of three white Swiss Nazi sheep kicking out the not Swiss black sheep, as the Swissies deliberately did with me, Sean Ross. And also here we can see the concept of three being them, our masters, the executives. And all together it makes four, for the concept of four. So it says square and compass. You see, they are in the same black and white colors as this here. There are three whiteies doing the things because the on a red underground for our masters and white is the also the new world order and the the concept of three it stands for the compass and all together there are four so it also says the concept of four so in this symbol only in the pharaonic and knights templars colors of right red and white of the Red House of Pharaoh, the Per Tasser, and the White House of Pharaoh, the Per Het, it does say square and compass. And all of these dudes here, with their lovely pillars and this here, they all know what it means, this here, that it says square and compass. Each and every one of them knows this. The moment they see black and white, they see this here. You understand that? It says the concept of three and four, just like this here. They are the ones behind this terror. And the Swiss executed it. They were completely hyped up like in Nazi Germany. And this means that the Swiss SVP 
Nazi party are led by Freemasons and that the entire world of Freemasonry was mobilized in this terror as in a black and white Freemason checkerboard configuration of black and white sheep being played out against each other while the true masters watching the show. I felt like being in Nazi Germany with the Swiss people entirely fanaticized and trigger happy in a goddamn Nazi pogrom against entire families, against my family, against my children, and against our lives. It was a goddamn mob rule, like in Nazi Germany. And I lived through this for the last 25 years. Here you can see Pharaoh Klaus Schwab from Switzerland. And this bull here in the Pharaonic colors of red and white, also the Knights Templars colors, represents Apis and it stands for the protection of the motherland and that's why some swiss cantons they also have the very same logo in their uh, coat of arms and here is a nine pointed star why nine that's kind of weird eh? you should have like six or eight like an even number and it's also the sun yeah you see it's a sun and these are the, the pharaonic colors all together, white, red, and blue. So why nine? Well, because there were nine original Templars, and there was the great Ennead of Egypt of the nine original gods. And this pharaoh here, well, he looks like a pharaoh, the way he's dressed, and he acts like a pharaoh, giving all the orders. So. Also, the Great Reset by the Swiss Klaus Schwab is of and by Pharaoh's Freemasons from Davos, Switzerland, with a similar priestly cloak as Set, the God of Deception and War, with the word Reset consisting out of the pharaonic names Re and Set, for Re or Re being Amun-Re, the sun god of ancient Egypt. Here you can see the great Re Set. Well, this is Amun-Re, or also called Amun-Ra. It's the same. So here is Ra. Or Re and Set, we just saw him together with the guy who invented this word, the great Re Set, and with Set being the Egyptian god of war and deception, Set. Here he is, Set, with the same cloak as we just saw before of uh, Klaus Schwab from Switzerland. And here it says, Re Set. Well, how much more obvious can it be? Hey, it's all full in our eyes. It's straight in our eyes, in our faces, you know. How much more obvious can it be? Re Amun Re and Set. The sun god and the god of war and deception. I mean, just look around, that's what we have, war, deception. And when Swissy, in June 2020, in Davos, Octogon, Switzerland, said, the great reset through war, war it will be, and 20 months later, the Ukraine war, started as in re set amun re set god of war 
where we could all see the pharaonic mace of war in the hands of Pharaoh Zelensky. Pharaoh rules the world and Switzerland is his base. Here you can see the new Freemason Museum in Switzerland in their capital, Bern. And the steps in front of the Swiss Freemason Museum have a pyramid look of seven steps, which is the holy number of a pyramid of the concept of three and four, added up, thus saying, square and compass for the initiated merely by looking at the number seven pyramid steps as an entering code into their temple. Then the square and compass pyramid steps are protected by a horizontal white roof for the Per Het White House horizontal Republican rule, saying Freemasonry gets protected by the New World Order horizontal republic. And in order to advance within the republic, one must transgress the steps of Freemasonry to advance its hierarchy. Of course, the whole bunker is in blue for Pharaoh's war against humanity, with a little bit of red on the electricity box for the original feudal vertical rule per tasser old world order red house of Pharaoh, which you can see here. And here you got the square and compass. And here it says prisoner of the Swiss, which is not only me, but also the rest of you lot. The entire globe are prisoner of the Swiss and their system. Of course, the square and compass on the wall is in white, as the white of the New World Order Republic is intertwined with Freemasonry. So here's the address. So when you want to visit the museum, Bern Jupiterstraße number 14, it's called the House of Freemasons. And you know what they mean with the house. It's the Per. It's a royal house with the chancery of the Swiss Grand Lodge Alpina. Very important Freemason Lodge. And, um, and of course, the Freemason Museum. So go count the steps, eh? One, two, three, seven. And here's a little bit of red, which is not a coincidence. And this is the horizontal white rule, which is covering up Freemasonry with the, with the seven steps. And if you want to get up here, you, you need to go up the seven steps, or actually the 33. The hierarchy of Freemasonry, that's what it means, because seven stands for the square and compass, and it is the holy number of the pyramid. So it's all here. Everything is here. The whole mob rule, it is here. So I show these two pictures together with Swiss mountains. Here it says, I didn't know. And here's the Swiss cross I made a, a not a swastika out of it. And uh, why? Well, this is quite obvious. The Swissies, they never knew. And the Nazis, it's the same. They always say, oh, I didn't know. I don't know. You know, I just followed orders. The Führer, he told me so. Or Mr. Putin, he told me so. You know, now we're going to hear the same thing in the Ukraine war. I didn't know. It's always the same narrative. So all these articles and historical facts all these symbols, images, and websites, in fact, prove that the Swissies, in fact, do know. It's not their fault, you see. The phrase just comes automatically 
for any Swiss-born national. Oh, sorry, we didn't know. Well, let's say the Swissies are natural-born nothing-knowers. As simple as that. And business as usual. So here we see another Swiss GPS system, probably for drones as well. It's called Swiss Track Pro. Here we can see Mr. Putin on a nuke with a naked torso, you know, just when he was sitting on that horse with his cowboy boots, when he was doing the dance, the square dance with George Bush. So when the Russian nukes come flying by, maybe at the very last moment, you'll get a glimpse of the Made in Switzerland sticker on the GPS navigation system of the Rusky nuclear missile. So it could easily find your hometown, making the Rusky avoid the common phrase, oh, sorry, we didn't know where the nuke was flying to. Hey, Swizzy. I do speech against hate, and I get condemned for hate speech because the forces of evil practice inverse speech. Here it says, I speech against hate. What is normal has become forbidden, and what is forbidden has become normal. And then they make it legal and not allowed to speak against it or to speak against them anymore. How convenient for the devil and his helpers to be portrayed as neutral, clean and innocent. It says, I speech against hate. And this here is hate speech and I speech against hate. How convenient to have all the evil practices made legal and generally accepted as the law. So here it says, set phasers to kill the patriarchy. This is hate speech. And I, Homie Ross, I speech against hate. And this is the Star Trek Delta symbol. And this here is the symbol for feminism, for the she males in pink. And do you know what phasers are? I'll show you what it is. It's a weapon. So using a weapon to kill the patriarchy, which means to kill the man, it's hate speech. And I get condemned for hate speech. Well, how is this possible? I speech against hate speech. It's the other way around. And, you know, this is an appeal for violence. And it should get them in prison. But they get all protected by the law. Uh, look. I'll show you what phasers are. Here it says phaser from Wikipedia. A phaser is a fictional weapon, a gun in the Star Trek universe. Yeah, there was the Star Trek symbol. The phaser effect in electronics. So it's it's a, a an array theon phaser. It's a directed energy weapon, which I already have nowadays. Eh? So this is real, yeah. And also it says here, phaser is an insecticide containing the active ingredient endosulfan. So, like Zyklon B. And I've proven you that the pink list killers are behind the genocide on the jaywalkers. You know, and now they're doing it again. Why? Because the orthodox jay runners, you know, they ran away from Egypt and from Rome. They always ran away. Which was a good thing, you know. I, I mean, I won't blame them for that. And um, 
so they used the uh, Zyklon B was an insecticide to kill them. And uh, there was the, uh, the Bunter Deutsche Mädels and Jutta Rüdiger, all pink list killers. And now they do it again, you know. They want to use again an insecticide to kill the patriarchy. Because for those orthodox J-runners, the patriarchy is important. Because a woman doesn't see the danger, you know, she's a birdie birdie, she wants warmth and food for the nest. This is how we were made. The men are there to protect the nest. This is how it's made. We cannot change this. This is how it is. So this is very evil. It's an appeal for violence. It's an appeal for genocide, again, by these pink list killers. And when I talk about it, because I speech against hate, I get condemned for hate speech. Now, what's going on here? I do only speech against hate and I get persecuted for a quarter of a century and my children too. The forces of evil hitting me and my family with their pharaonic mace saying we're gonna hit you just as long until you won't contradict us anymore and until you'll repeat the narrative we'll tell you to. Therefore, YouTube deleted my last video on my channel, Gyuri, of January the 11th, 2023, because I speak against hate. And the forces of hate and evil do not want me to. So here it says, hate speech for my film Swiss made Ukraine killers. The Ukraine killers were Swiss made. And it's a fact. I mean, I, I speech against this hate. They, they, they're killing Ukrainians with the help of Swiss made articles. And they know it. It says January the 11th, 2023 for a hate speech. What a shame, really. What a shame. Expires on April the 11th. So for three months, can't make any videos here. Or I shouldn't. And here it says here. This was another one here. Appeal rejected, of course. And I submitted a, an appeal on the same day. I pierce right through them. And my tongue is as sharp as a sword, which makes them afraid. I immediately re-uploaded that last deleted video with a lot of new and important information on the Brighton.com free speech video platform in USA, America. So here is my Brighton channel, same name. Here is the icon. There's a big lion and a little cat with a big shadow behind. So with a lot of potential, a little cat with a lot of potential. And here is the video. Here you can see the Knights Templars logo of the Swiss High Templar Command. And here the, uh, the GPS um, for the uh, Russian drones, uh, Swiss GPS. And here's the title, Swiss Made Ukraine Killers, video censored on YouTube. So here you can see the famous crossroads. To the left, it's evil and hate speech. And to the right, it's free speech and good. And I speech against hate. That's all I ever done. I haven't done anything else. I got my channels removed and my videos removed. So these are the crossroads which about which many famous musicians have talked about. And many 
have taken the road towards evil in order to get famous. And to my big surprise, the next day after the upload and consecutive censorship, YouTube had reinstalled my deleted video without a word, without any notice, and without an excuse. I just found it back accidentally, and so did some of you. But most of you won't ever see the video and its important information, as you all got a notice that the video got deleted because of hate speech. But in fact, I speech against hate. You listen carefully, YouTube and the Swissies and the Pinkley's Killers. I speech against hate. So you just lay down and stop this. So I herewith invite you to watch it anyway, because I promise you, you don't want to miss its valuable information. So here it is, YouTube has put it back. My appeal got approved. So six days ago, they put it back and the video I made seven days ago. The title Swiss Made Ukraine Killers on the same channel here, Gure. Now, who is responsible for attacking me and deleting my film? Although YouTube is responsible for taking my video off, they didn't initiate the illegal censoring of my video because otherwise they wouldn't have reinstalled my video when they realized after watching that I don't do any hate speech and that in fact I do speech against hate. And well, in the last video, my speech was against the hate of the pink list killers and their kill the patriarchy hate speech. And in fact, they do the same as neo-Nazis do and a lot of Muslims. Instead of saying kill the or do something against the um, uh, the jaywalkers or the jayrunners, they say um, do something against the Zionists because then it's um, legally not really um, attackable. So these ones here, the pink list killers, they do the same thing. Instead of saying kill all the men, they say kill the patriarchy with ray guns. Can you imagine ray guns? It's like they have an alliance with the aliens. Oh, it is sort of very alien to me, the whole stuff they do eh? with their phasers and ray guns. And my speech against hate was against the hate of the Swissies and their hate speech against immigrants and their three white Swissy sheep beating up the individual black sheep. And my speech in the deleted video was against the Swiss collaboration with dictator Putin, helping him to murder Ukrainian civilians through the Swiss military industrial complex. So one of these two groups you can see here, and maybe both simultaneously, 
must have organized themselves in a Swiss pink list killer conspiracy against Homie Ross to massively smash the hate speech button in order to destroy the video by an organized group of people sharing the same motive for this felony and yes undermining the u.s constitution and its first amendment in a conspiracy under u.s law is in fact a felony and punishable with a prison sentence so i would like youtube to find out who exactly is raping the hate speech option which was meant to protect minorities and was not meant to aggress and terrorize individuals by these very same minorities who in fact can apparently defend themselves very well and without the help of YouTube's censorship terror which is a useless tool anyway as the evidence of this criminal application of the YouTube hate speech tool herewith fully proves and YouTube Swissy and the pink list killers please read with me here i read out loud i speech against hate did you get it the problem is that these so-called poor minorities have the best lawyers they are highly organized and know how to use nepotism by using members of their community on key positions into their own favors with which they are premeditatively crushing the individual so who in fact is here the poor minority huh? i've been telling you for years that i'm blacklisted by the swiss and their nazi authorities and that i'm pink listed by the pink list killers and as soon as i make a pretty tough video against their hate speech against humanity i get attacked and censored it's perfect mob rule i have no other words for it so what more proofs do you need that i'm blacklisted by the swiss and pink listed by the pink list killers it's an absolute disaster that those who commit hate speech are being given the tools to censor the ones who speak out against hate speech i urge youtube to reconsider their absolutely useless hate speech tool policy because it's entirely counterproductive so please youtube read with me and i speak out loud i speech against hate did you get that quod erat demonstrandum in latin meaning which was to be demonstrated q e d what had to be proven has been proven so swissy 
You carefully read with me. Q E D Quod erat demonstrandum. What had to be proven has been proven. A Swissy. Elvis Vena, here from Spain, was 24 years old in 2005 when the Swiss Gnuzel destroyed his future because Elvis had talked about something he better hadn't. Because Elvis unknowingly broke Swissy's laws of silence. The Swiss Gnuzel made Elvis leave Switzerland where he was born, where he grew up, spoke the Swiss language, and then forced to get washed up in a strange land, where he couldn't speak the language, but where his parents and Spanish guest workers originally came from. Hnuzel here is a professor of political science of the University of Lausanne, Switzerland who was given all the time a platform to speak out on National Swiss TV. And we all know that only our masters get reserved this honor and privilege to indoctrinate us with their truths, of which every single one of their truths is a big lie, as the lie is their first and foremost weapon. I visited Elvis in 2019 in Gijón, Spain, as he invited me, being a big fan of my videos. And now, June 2019, he had driven to France to come and see me. So I asked him what Swizzy's name was, and I immediately recognized things when inserting his name in Google Images, like this picture here where you can see him with bricklayer's work on his left chest, where the heart is, meaning his heart is with masonry, with the Freemasons, of which he's a part of. And on the rest of his self-made, self-designed shirt, it is full of unfinished circles for the concept of three, referring to them, our masters and that their New World Order is not entirely finished yet, not having total control over humanity yet. At the end of the circles to the right, they become a horizontal line for their New World Order horizontal Republican rule. So the t-shirt says that through Freemasonry, our masters and concept of three created the horizontal rule. Okay, I already filmed it for you because, I, but now I'm gonna, um, a fan of my videos from Spain, he came and visit me here in the east of France. So here's the Templar's Chapel from, uh, I don't see anymore from what year. Uh, well, anyway, it's very old. It's about a thousand years old. Here in the Jura. Okay, St. George. And oh, here inside all the <clears throat> I already filmed that for you. And the chairs are all with the backs to the to 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 Christ because they were Satanists. These nice Knights Templars. Uh, I hope you can all see the Templars cross on on top of it. But I already filmed it for you. Okay. Hello, everybody. Um, I'm born in Switzerland. I'm 40, 40 years old, and as a foreigner. I was also, as shown, I was a victim of the Swiss terror. In my case, I was a student in the uni, yeah? University. University. Of Lausanne. Of Lausanne. And uh, I, um, I had a big problem with a, a, pro, a teacher, which name was 
Ronnie Knizel. And I, he destroyed my life because I, I speak about the, the influence of the lobbies on the Swiss politics. Also, so I lose all my studies. I move to another country. I have to left my my country that was Switzerland. I left everything because of the Swiss terror. I was probably blacklisted as well. So I told you that all all what says Sean about the Swiss um, s certain Swiss people is true. It's full of uh, Freemasons everywhere, as in other countries, but much more probably uh, full of pedos everywhere in the school uh, in the sports associations in the streets uh, full of pedos and uh, of course the victims are foreigners uh, it's it's also Swiss victims uh, the, for sure the people the Swiss people and, uh, but uh, it's very satanic and uh, what says Sean is quite true uh, I, if you hear it's because you already know it but to all the other people that don't know about the Swiss connection, just uh, uh, look for some information. You you will see. Oh, it's all is true. And uh, even the Swiss themselves, they claim that they um, descend from the Templar. Even if you look in Google, you look, you will find information from uh, Swiss um, researchers, scholars that claims very precisely that Switzerland uh, was founded by the Templars. They, they, you can find it. And um, many information. You just look for it. It's all on the internet. And uh, spread the word, the, the word of Sean. Um, uh, let's fight the, 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 the criminals, the, the satanists, and uh, the killing the, the children in the rituals. It's very disgusting and uh, so we have to unite people of the world and uh, don't blame the the G Walker's conspiracy it's disinformation um, you have to, to learn learn be open you have to be uh, humil humility humility to to learn new things and uh, you will find everything everything is uh, on the net and uh, yeah uh, keep on fighting the the system and uh, so before you said that you thought as well for a moment that the jaywalkers were behind everything because of things you saw in the no internet not really and the until G you saw my yeah, videos no because i not the jaywalkers but maybe some families very famous families that they always talking about you know yeah. i won't even say the name because it's no no need so so but what is your yeah, name my name is elvis elvis like elvis presley um N nice to meet you. I say hello to all the Elvis, the Vina, YouTubers. Vina. Vina, yeah. And so he has got an 88, but yeah. he's, he's not a Nazi. <laughs> no. he's the, you know, the Nazis they have this number, you know, to yeah. identify themselves because the the letter eight, uh, H is this eight, the eighth letter, and it's also octagon. Yeah. Uh, the eighth letter in the alphabet. So here it's uh, 88. It means uh, Heil Hitler, but he's yeah. not at all a Nazi. Don't worry, people. No, I'm anyway, not it says Brooklyn. There's a lot of jaywalkers there. You know? <laughs> it's a bit funny, you know, the jaywalkers, Brooklyn, and here and 88, 88 of the Nazis. Yeah. Really funny. It's a big mix, very, biz yeah. biz very bizarre. <laughs> but I find it in a shop, yeah. in a usual shop. So you did four years of university, For and nothing, you were studying yeah. uh, political science. Yeah. And uh, you only had to write your your final exam. Exactly. And this guy he just said, "I don't, I, I don't accept you." Don't accept me. So four years for nothing. For nothing. Just for nothing. Only because of one fr Swiss Freemason. He was called René Knusel. Yeah. It's and a funny name. It's a Swiss German name. But not just him. More, more teachers in the uni. They, they blacklist me because when you talk about the the influence of the the lobbies, etc., they don't like it. So you, you're just black blacklisted and. Yeah. So, you, so your parents are Spanish from Galicia, yeah, 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 yeah. Gijon, and yeah. uh, so you left Switzerland, you were born there, your French is your native language, yeah. and you left bloody Switzerland and you went to, um, to a country which is a completely foreign country for you, yeah, right, because right, right. You, you couldn't speak Spanish and... I'm not really, I, yeah, I'm, I just flew away, I, I ran away, yeah. and I washed in the... I washed up in the north Spanish coast, and but I'm 
as shown, I'm also, I have you no life. You washed up with the Spanish <laughs> As a delphin. <laughs> and uh, yeah, completely destroyed, no, no future, I'm blackmailed and blacklisted, so... Don't think that Sean talks uh, shit, it's, it's true, it's something that really uh, real, sorry to say, but yeah. Switzerland is bad, eh? It's nice country, the, the nature, it's it's so very good people, but the the Freemasonry just destroys all it's it's all satanic, all cold, it's like the people they look like snakes. They look at you then you lose all your energy just with the eye looking, the, the eyesight. It's something bad in Switzerland. Very bad. Yeah. They have the alliance with evil. That's why I called my video Swiss beast, home of the devil, because yeah. I know they're bad. Yeah. They're bad. So the Swiss people, please, you, Swiss people, if you're victims of the, if you are, you feel that you have no future because and you're sad because you don't find a job and think that maybe it's because you you're too, they know because in the school they know who is curious, curious, and who might be curious, uh, curious huh? and might be uh, dangerous for the system, so. Uh, you uh, try to unite, to spread the word, and also the, the Swiss foreigners. Uh, probably you're watching this, but uh, get in touch with, with Sean and speak about your experience, uh, because there must be thousands of um, foreigners that have, may have been victims of the Swiss masonry as well. So. So he was recalcitrant, just like me, and he, they, they, no, at the moment he wasn't even recalcitrant, they just saw he had the potential only of being recalcitrant. And now, with all the pre-crime laws and the pre-crime, you know, the uh, yeah. Tavistock, we are analyzed, and when they see a person or a child, he has the, only the potential to understand certain things they already destroy and this this is what happened with Elvis here yeah so they don't want Elvis here who is an intelligent guy I, I really notice he's intelligent and they just want to make that's why you know I just see something here this is a garden gnome you know that's why they put it here at the fr at the, the predecessors of the Freemasons who found it so the Knights Templars who found it Switzerland they just want to make a garden gnome out of you. And that's why they just put it here, the garden gnome. At a very old... So thank you, Elvis. You're welcome. I'm going to make a nice video about this uh, René Knusel. Thanks to Already, you, uh, I had a look in the internet. I punched the, the, his name together with the, the word children. And a lot of horrible things already popped out. So I'm, uh, at the moment, I have a place where I can do it. I'll make, I'll make that video. Thanks to you, Sean, for, for all what you bring to to people and uh, thanks for you to, to open my eyes and to understand what that I I don't have to be too worried about what happened it's it's something that I, I can do nothing against that they are very power, powerful and the the people we need to to you need to fight yeah. that so it's if you want to unite can I put your telephone number and your email under the under the video so people, my email, yeah, 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 because my phone number, I'm, I'm poor and I, I don't yeah, have money for I will. The... Thank you, Elvis. Oh, welcome. Thanks to you, Sean. Bye. Thank you for being intelligent and understanding everything, because most people, they don't even understand it. Thank you. Thank you for that. So, Swissy Genuzel here is a Freemason, where his heart lies, where he's smiling through his teeth, with a friendly, Swissy-like, innocent voice, while passing on his true belief to his insider pals, conspiring against the people. It says, the seven members of the Federal Council, the seven heads of the Swiss Beast, and from 1855 to 1875, Swissy had one of the seven heads of the beast of the Alps by the same name of Gnuzu, when Melchior Joseph Martin Gnuzu was one of the seven heads of the beast, as in the revelations of John of the Bible. 
for 20 years, also serving as the Minister of Political Affairs, just as university political science professor with his Freemason t-shirt, René Gnuzel, who is for sure of the same family bloodline with that seventh head of the beast in the 19th century. I'm going to show that to you. Oh, look, there he is. Joseph Mel Melchior Joseph Martin Gnusel. Yeah, was a Swiss politician from Luzern, member of the Swiss Federal Council from 1855 to 1875. So he became the uh, one of the heads of the um, one of the seven heads on July 14th, which is the date uh, on uh, in, th in the year 1099 on July 14th, when the Knights Templars they did a terrible massacre in Jerusalem, killing the Jaywalkers, the Muslims, and even the Christians. And so that's why the Knights Templars, for their transition from the Old World Order to the New World Order, they took this date as the national holiday for the Republic in France, um, July the 14th. It's the, uh, their Republican holiday. And Republican means the same thing as Democrat. Democrat is what they do. Democracy is what they do. And the Republic is where they do it. <laughs> That's exactly the same thing. So you see, for 20 years, 1855 to 1875. And he was also like uh, the Minister of um, Political Affairs, just like his um, descendant, René uh, Gnuzo. In High German, his name is being pronounced Knuzel, which in Bern, Swiss German gets pronounced Gnuzo, and being the original way of speaking out his name. In High German, Knuzeln means to smudge and to make dirty, out of which his name Knuzel or Knuzel is coming out of. So here is a Knuzeln. It means beschmutzen. So look at this word. I'll show you what it means. This is the more usually word for to make dirty. Beschmutzen. This is probably more Swiss German. Knusen, it means beschmutzen. And I'll show you what beschmutzen is in English. So here it says, beschmutzen, make dirty, to be smirch. So that's what's his name of this guy, Knusel or Knusel. It means to smudge. So I wondered how many children Mr. Freemason Knusel smudged. Because that's what Freemasons do. They're always after our children. So here it says, the University of Lausanne, and it means the observatory of the maltreatment of children. So when I inserted his name, Gnuzo, in the search bar together with the French word for children, because in Lausanne, where he's from, they speak French, then this OME, Child Protective Organization, popped up, the Observatory for the Mistreatment Towards Children, of which our Freemason Gnuzo is the director. Here you can see it. The O M E. Observatoire de la Maltraitance envers les enfants. René Gnuzo of the University of Lausanne in Switzerland. It says the University of Lausanne. It says the director is him, René Gnuzo. It's always the same. So this article, what I just showed you here, he was on the Swiss national TV again, as usual, you know. And it says here that 50,000 children are the victims of maltreatment every year in Switzerland. But they're not going to tell you the, uh, the whodunit part, hey? Here's the whodunit part. There he is. So Freemasons are always into so-called child protective 
orgs in order to attack the family and by law kidnap children from their loving parents in order to isolate the child from its parents to have total access to the child by the perverted satanic masons and the pink list killers always around especially when the father of the child is dominant in pharaoh's war against the patriarchy in collaboration with the vast majority of our women like they did with a similar and not very child care organization as freemason Gnuzel, his ome in this sick country called the netherlands where the child robbing child care organization officially robbed a one-year-old turkish boy away from his loving parents to give him as a birthday present to a couple of pink list killers which you can see here in this excellent jaywalker news report well, this is exactly what these freemason or well, not very child care ngos do by the freemason motto the sicker the better making good men better so mote it be so mote it be so mote it be is a ritual phrase used by the freemasons in rosicrucianism and more recently by neo-pagans meaning so may it be like inshallah so it is required or so must it be like inshallah and remember how the caliphate how the caliph he was already in the knights templars order where it all comes from and may be said after the person giving the prayer says amen so mote it be inshallah the only comments on the film about the turkish boy being given as a christmas present to the to the pink lace killers so the only comment and most likely by a jaywalker disgusted by this crime against a defenseless child said cynically given the options this child was given i'm sure he would have chosen abortion the same with this u.s scam organization i found on brighton called vetsforchildrescue.org who are only begging for money all the time who don't answer any mails who are just a bunch of bodybuilders promoting their lucrative business under the disguise of some u.s patriot veterans and look at their logo it has a templar v it has the four for the concept of four there are four letters here there are four things here in white so there is a concept of war four for the square and each thing here is part of a big circle and the circle is the compass or the concept of three so only with this it says square and compass then there is the falcon here which stands for horus it's in white for the new world's order the horizontal rule don't you believe this all this lies all over so they calculated the two weak spots in american hearts veterans and chasing pedophiles so they put the two ingredients for financial success all together patriot patriotic u.s veterans chasing pedophiles in their promotion video contraland which is far too professionally made to be true oh why did we see this picture again of these guys standing here hollywood maybe oh band of brothers that's where we saw the image it's all hollywood oh honey it's the band of brothers well let's give them a fat paycheck can't we what's that band of brothers honey how much are we gonna pay look at that a child and the full moon and how much we're we gonna pay honey twenty five dollars or a thousand dollars country land oh yeah it's all holy oh we can buy a t-shirt with the freemason stuff on it honey
Well, in fact, the vet's four children rescue were close-knit together with the police, or are full of Freemasons themselves, who take the orders from the Freemason politicians, policing the people, police violence, and the police is a worldwide blue octagon army of the aristocracy, protecting the pedophiles and not the children. Ah. Oh. These police pals of the bodybuilders must have loved their lovely Vets for Child Rescue Freemason logo. And uh, the 11 years I've been on YouTube as a video producer, I've seen dozens of these organizations pop up out of nowhere until direct fame straight to the top in no time. Fill up their pockets max load and disappear into nowhere just as sudden as when they arrived. I know what a real veteran looks like who are mostly broken men, alcoholics or worse, and who on the contrary as wrongfully presented in their money scam here. Veterans have been professional state killers, having killed Afghan and Iraqi children as collateral damage instead of vet for, ch for child rescue. What a sick joke. Don't fall for these bodybuilder scam scammers people. They just want to hit your money out of your pocket, that's all. Why don't they defend these children here? Shall I read it for you? Here, an Afghan woman, right, is interviewed as she sits next to the body of a child allegedly killed by a U.S. service member. And the U.S. service member do not protect children like vets for child rescue. They murder children, people. In Panjwai, Kandahar province, south of Kabul, Afghanistan, Sunday, March the 11th, the date, everything is here, 2012. A U.S. service member walked out of a base in southern Afghanistan before dawn Sunday and started shooting Afghan civilians, according to villagers and Afghan and NATO officials. Villagers showed an Associated Press photographer 15 bodies, including women and children. You want me to show you more pictures, eh? Go and believe this vets for child rescue scam. You know, YouTube and the internet it's full of money scammers, you know, cyber criminals like the Vets for Child Rescue. This is what US veterans do, this here. They kill so many children. Shall I read it for you, eh? The body of an Afghan child allegedly shot by a rogue US soldier are seen with other bodies in the back of a truck in Al Khuzai village of Punjabi district, Kandahar province. On March 11, again, Reporter counted 16 bodies, including women and children, in three Afghan houses after a rogue U.S. soldier walked out of his base and began shooting civilians. Early Sunday, NATO's International Security Assistance Force, oh, that sounds nice, eh? International Security Assistance Force. Nice words, eh? Security Assistance. Said it had arrested a soldier, yeah, sure, yeah. I can show you hundreds of pictures in the in Iraq. It's the same thing. Yeah, you want me to show you more, eh? Or watch this video here. The same title on YouTube, but you better watch it here if um, if it works with your computer. And uh, this is one of the most horrific things I've seen here. This is this is what U.S. veterans do, or at least what they are complicit with. Um, this is an Afghan child, there are many Afghan children and in Iraq who uh, got really sick uh, because of depleted uranium, stuff with, uh, with which uh, US veterans what they shoot around with. So this child only lived a couple of hours before they put him in the, uh, in the garbage bin. This is what US veterans do. Look at the facts. There is no vets for child rescue. It's all a scam. Here, I'm going to show you what US veterans really do. You know, how many children they kill. Well, here are you, invisible children. 
Whenever the Americans start talking about helping children, bringing democracy, that gets real scary. This is because of depleted uranium. And this is what's left of it. They say depleted uranium, you know, uh, bullets and um, cartridges are being used because it penetrates metal and tanks and helicopters and all sorts of war material. But the Afghans don't have any tanks. They don't have any armored vehicles or helicopters. So the the uh, ura depleted uranium, it's only because of this. To murder the people and their children. So th here are you invisible children they talk about. See? Well, here are some more invisible children who were being made invisible by the Americans and depleted uranium. Which is really uh, uh, nothing but a, but a gift of the democracy that the United States has installed in, Af installed in Afghanistan. This is the hor hor horrific deformity, deformity from which thousands and thousands of Afghans will be dying from and, and generations upon generations of Afghans will be suffering from. This is the crime that deserves nothing but a total uh, uh, justice. And total justice is nothing but the, the, the destruction and defamation of those who have committed this. This is the tragedy and travesty of Afghanistan and this is the product of so-called democracy. Nothing but a horrific reform. If there is anyone that is doubting. So, this is what the Americans are doing and why they call it invisible children. Well, because this newborn life just ended up in a garbage can, invisible. You know, invisible, um, invisible arms. You can't see it. It's uranium. It's radioactivity. That's also invisible. You know, they um, they're even joking. You know, the Americans and the uh, the New World Order. They're even joking. You know, making a practical joke. Invisible children, and they laugh. The Americans are laughing. You know, invisible children. Uh, this is what they do. <laughs> do you really think they care about the, the children in Uganda? Eh? Eh? I tell you, it gets real scary when the Americans say we're going to help the children. Eh? Right, see the Pharaoh show on Gure. That's G-I-U-R-E-H. The Pharaoh show to understand more. So I made this video 10 years ago. And I talked with this uh, Afghan doctor who filmed this in Afghanistan about the uh, depleted uranium. And this was actually another money cyber criminal, cyber crime money scam. Maybe you, some of you remember this. Just like the uh, Vets for Child Rescue. This Tacony 2012 Invisible Children. They, they, they made a very professional video just like vets for child rescue everybody talked about it and they popped out they popped up out of nowhere right to the top they filled up their pockets and then they were gone nobody ever heard about them anymore so be warned people veterans do not protect children they kill children by the millions well, of course you feel sick after what you've done, homie. And now putting out your PTSD flag, you know, to collect some pity from your neighbors and all. Oh, now you want help. Oh, you poor thing. So first you murder people all over the world for Pharaoh. And now you want Pharaoh's help? The best solution for your problems. Or maybe 
the best solution for our problems which you have been giving us and the world. And I mean, where was Freemason Gnuzu with his child protective service when the Swiss Nazi police arrested me with an anti-terrorist squad in front of my very young children, entirely traumatizing them for life? Well, Freemason Gnuzu was nowhere to be seen. So all of this is the controlled opposition. René Gnuzel, Freemason, with his child protective organization, the OME, or the Vets for Child Rescue Org, it's all the controlled opposition. Meaning they are pretending to be the opposition by the people, opposing uh, and, and doing opposition and trying to help the children, but it's just controlled and they're just doing as if they would do something. Just getting your money and even attack our children, doing the opposite. This is how the controlled opposition works. It's controlled by our masters to prevent us, the people, to organize and to found the organization and the opposition ourselves. So they put it up themselves, the opposition, so they control it before we control it, you see. And also with all these NGOs they found, they usually get subsidies from the state for doing nothing and for doing the exact opposite of what they claim to perform. And we, the people, they have to, we have to pay for it and they just stick it into their pockets, parasiting on us, the aristocracy and the Freemasons. Yeah, look, here is again, mobilizing agencies for incident surveys on child maltreatment, successful participation in Switzerland. Oh, yeah, well, they took away a lot of children from their loving parents, eh? And put, put, put them with the, the pink list killers. And here he is again, René Gnuzo. Hope you can read it. Anyway, Switzerland is the worldwide center of child pedophilia. Hey, Gnuzo. So here he is again, the Gnuzo, here. Yeah. And he wrote a book, Lutter contre les pauvres. Here yeah, again, Lutter contre les pauvres. In 2014. In French, that means in English, fight the poor. It doesn't say fight poverty. Lutter contre les pauvres, it means fight the poor. So I don't know how many organizations Gnuzel has founded, but he also wrote a book entitled Combat the Poor. So the title is not Fight Poverty, no. The title is Fight the Poor. And this is typical Swiss to fight the poor. As being poor is a severe crime in Swaziland, and Swissy will try to entirely destroy you and put you in prison when you're poor. Therefore, the Swiss write books entitled Combat the Poor. And here, the poverty is not a crime, dot ch. Ch, it means they are, it's from Switzerland. It's Confederatia Helvetica. So this uh, website comes from Switzerland and it's probably done by immigrants. And they want to change the Swiss law that poverty is not a crime anymore. It is a crime, people. In Switzerland, poverty is a very severe crime. And it might put you in prison for years, as they did with me. Well, this is exactly the experience I made in Switzerland. That they steal everything of you. And then put you in prison in the end. For not being able to pay all the fines. They constantly attack you with in Switzerland. It says, Sean has been released prison after a sum of ransom was paid to the police state. 20,000 Swiss francs. I'll show that in some other videos. And Gnuzo did the same thing with Elvis 16 years ago, destroying his future and making a poor man out of him by refusing to sign Elvis his final essay examination. So here you can see Elvis, his uh, YouTube channel, Gugi Geisli, that's Swiss German, like Gnuzel, Gugi Geisli. 
And I particularly like this video he did last year. Go and have a go and have a look. Um, give him a helping hand. Why? Why did Gnuzu do this? Well, because Elvis wrote it on the political presence of lobbying in the Swiss parliaments with secret fraternities behind the screens. So Freemason Gnuzu decided all by himself to destroy the young man's bright future in order to prevent him to occupy a management position within society and through which this typical act of dominating another person can be entirely contributed to the psychological aspect of the essence of sodomy, to be either dominated or to dominate, a practice widely practiced at the higher levels of Freemasonry, to which the Swiss Genuzu very obviously belongs to with his Freemason t-shirt. Right? So, Here's that's why here on the left side there's the ladder of the hierarchy because the essence of hierarchy is sodomy. Either you get fucked by your superior or you fuck up your subordinates, as in as above, so below. In English, as above, so below, which they call squaring the circle of sodomy, cementing the bond. And I hope I don't have to explain you with what substance these perverts cement your tiny circle after they've squared you into it. Squaring the circle. Circle is compass and the square is square. Squaring the circle. An alchemical love story. That's why. They show the square and circle in all those corporate logos for square and compass, squaring the circle to cement the bond in the most literal, physically perverted way, so you never forget who's owning you. This cemented bond is Bund in German, as in Bundesrepublik Deutschland, Bundesländer und Bundestag, all smudged by the perverts, as in the word knuseln, for knusel, or in Swiss German, das Bundeshaus, der Bund, Bundesplatz, und Bundesbrief, from 1291, when the Templars founded their Switzerland, two and a half months after the end of the Crusades in 1291. The name in English is the Federal Charter from 1291, which is the oldest document in Switzerland. Here you can see it, 1291. And here's Apis, the bull, which means the, it's a symbol of the, uh, of the protection of the motherland in Egypt. That's why in America, after the uh, Patriot Act, by Bush, related to this Swiss family von Grafenried, uh, they made the APIS, which is the Advanced Personal Information System. 1291 APIS, it's all pharaonic. So let's have a look here. You punch pause if you want to read it. It's the oldest document in Switzerland. Look, why do, you, why do you think there is a Templar's cross here, eh? Why do you think? The concept of three, just like before. Here, you see the three guys here in, in the three cantons of Uri, Schwitz and Nidwalden. Three. Three is the concept of three, our masters. So our masters, the pharaohs, Alpes, they made Switzerland, yes, in 1291. It's all there in their symbology. So here it is again, the Federal Charter of 1291. Of course, they write a lot of nonsense, you know, to make it look clean, and they, they don't write the truth. Well, it is the oldest constitutional document. And that's about the, the, the entire truth. They write about it, right? And actually, the other one was uh, 
They made it a bit later, but it's the same thing. It's the Bundesbrief, Bund, like the bond of squaring the circle, eh? And under the symbol of the pharaonic domination, we got all one of these operators cementing the bond and squaring the circle. And that's why there's the evil ones, they have their pink list killer agenda. And this is a real picture from Paris, the obelisk I already filmed. And these pink list killers here, they know it immediately through the spiritual realm of Pharaoh that they can square a couple of circles here and cement the bond. Or the Bruder Bond in South Africa, who sold us out to the Nubians. And uh, just have a look at their logo. Now we all see the Red Templars crosses here on the Pope here. And the Knights Templars are always hiding in Cistercian monasteries. Having, they had and they still have the Cistercian, a white robe. And this is almost like a weapon here. Because the Cistercians were the only monastic order that could carry a weapon legally so and all this sodomy cementing the bond squaring the circle comes from the knights templars in the cistercian monasteries of the brotherhood as in look me under the hood brother the brotherhood come look me under the hood brother brotherhood and I'll square your tiny circle, cementing the bond of the evil one. The rape of society by the Swiss Genuzu, and the essence of sodomy in a dominating position of society, enjoying to crush the innocent and to smudge a child's innocence. As his name Genuzu means out of the German verb knuseln meaning to make dirty. Hey, Genuzel, ain't that so? What a bloody mess. So people, this, really, this is not us leaving this here. Hey, they did it and there are no children coming here. And what child would leave its, its, its play uh, toy here, you know? No child would leave its toy here. So they did it, you know? There's just a symbol that means, you know, they, they want to make a garden gnome out of it. So this guy, René Knuzel, in Swiss German, you pronounce it in Bernese German, it's being pronounced René Genuzo. It's a Genuzo, it's probably. Well, he, he mounted an organization to, um, it's called OME or something, Organization of, um, of mal, Maltreated Children who were, you know, so they can take him away, you know, under the pretext the parents are not good for the children, you know. Just give him a little slap on the, on the behind or something to help him grow up, yeah. And um, so they take him away, the children. And this is his organization of René Genuzel. So they can sacrifice him here. You know, this, this is for little babies. The head is coming here. And they're going to put them here, down here. Because it's all satanic stuff. And Switzerland is just there, where you can see the mountains behind. So there's a really big chance. Lausanne is not very far. There's a really big chance this guy has been here, René Genuzel, and um, he's been here. Well, Homie Ross has been here as well. You can all see that. In the same line of this war against the men and their sons, Swiss Freemason Genuzel also leads an organization against domestic violence. Assisted by his feminist student Magali Guillon and another student called Lucille Franz, making their careers assisting Pharaoh's conspiracy against the European man in alliance with the European women, without talking a single word about female domestic violence in their NGO on domestic violence. And I hope you all recognize the logo here, which is a swastika. And there are four things for the concept of four, just like in the swastika. 
and it looks it, it looks like a circle. So the four is the concept of four, which is a square, and the circle is the compass. So all the initiated ones, they read square and compass. And the prairie, you remember that in my video, I talked about this um, clinic in Switzerland where all the Nazis went to. Hey, that's why this here, the logo of Pharaoh here with this feminist female European helpers against the man. And um, La Prairie, I think I showed in my, uh, in part two or three of my video, the Swiss Bees, Home of the Devil. And in La Prairie, they make also the, uh, um, the youth elixir. And it's all connected to Jeffrey Epstein's uh, Templars Island. And all the Nazis, they went here. So this is the logo of Pharaoh Gnuzu here. In a war against man, the males of Europe, it is a war. And, you know, to, to have a, uh, a pretext to take away the children and uh, to destabilize the, uh, the family and the marriage to isolate the children. This is what they do. Here it is again, the clinic La Prairie. Well, first, prairie, it's an English word. American, it's not even Swiss. So it's really rare that it pops out here. It's for aesthetics and longevity suite, where they make the youth elixir, and for which they need children, you know. So that's why this um, so-called domestic, uh, against domestic violence thing is called also La Prairie, where they, so they can isolate the children and get them over here. It's in my film, The Swiss Bees, Home of the Devil, in one of the three parts, either two or three and about their so-called unilateral domestic violence. I'd just like to add this here, what I wrote almost 20 years ago. Violence has endless many faces, of which all are allowed, except one, the male physical reaction, and mostly for defense. A woman stands all sorts of impunishable violences at her disposal. And most females make daily use of them. Psychological violence, violence in union, conspirative, conspirative violence, violence behind one's back, violence of theatrical lies, violence of delegating states' forces, just if her mood says so, violence of taking away his kids, Violence of aimed preparation of mobbing. Violence of all sorts of either hysterical or calculated provocations, etc., etc. Thus, the big violence sneaks in through the back door. As a man, even pink list killers try to have a go at you, because even they've got the message through. Well, there won't be any appropriate male reaction anymore. Anyway, she knows she'll always win. Society, justice, and police are feminine, clearly seen in German and French, where D and La means feminine. Like in D Justiz, D Polizei, D Gesellschaft in German, or in French, La Police, La Société. Uh, la justice also is all feminine, further promoted by the fact that the symbol of a man is on purpose traditionally being represented by Jesus on the cross. That's none else than pre present day's male symbol. He can't run away because he's got his feet nailed. He can't defend himself because he's got his hands nailed. He can only move his head, nod, and say, Yes, darling. No, honey. Or oh, yes, Mr. President. No, Judge, sir. Sean Ross, 2005. Last update. A few days ago, I wrote a mail to the Swiss Gnuzu and pushing him a little bit, giving him three days to write me back. 
or I take adequate measures about my children being under terror of the Swiss police and what he intends to do about it with his famous child protective org. org. I'm surprised I even got an answer, which is more than those US bodybuilder veteran scammers and their vets for child, child rescue money magnet. So the Swiss Genusel answered me that there's nothing he could do to help and defend my children from the Swiss terror. So here you can see my mail, Sean Ross, and here's his answer, René Genusel. So here he is again, René Genusel. They call him on Swiss TV, they call him the expert. Here again, René Genusel. René Genusel. He probably gets paid like an expert as well, eh? So, what other confirmation do you need? That these organizations are only there to swallow up taxpayers' money for their NGOs? That they're just there to dis destabilize families and attack the man, most of all, and to build their fancy academic careers upon our misery? our money and our lives, well, in the end, there's nothing they can do, what they're supposed to do under entirely premeditated false presumptions, taking us by the nose, the cattle that we are. So here they are again, the infernal trio. René Genuso, Lucille Franz, Magali Guillain. Magali Guillain. So not even his fancy assistants, Magali Guillain and Lucille Franz, also TV and newspaper personalities like their master, Genuzo, couldn't do anything to protect my children from Swiss police terror and do the things they're supposed to do for the very simple reason that their agenda is a completely other one than the one they display and rub into our faces with their fake smiles and innocent sounding voice intonations. So here you can read it in French. And these names like the Prairie, I mean, you don't have to understand Fr French to understand it. You know, with English you can do. The word feminist, it's all over feminist, feminist. You know, that's it's the same as in English. And here they are, the... Um, the perpetrators, Magali Guillain, Lucille Franz, they're all feminists, and René Gneusel, their master, Pharaoh. And it has the same name as La Prairie, where they need little children, you know, to um, isolate it from their parents to make the youth elixir for... Um, for like Jeffrey Epstein and, and all president, uh, all our presidents and all this. And here it says, to protect and to, and to give a place to sleep to the victims of violence and their children. You know, they, they want to split up the family, you see? And the victim, well, who is the victim of violence? You know, it's always, it's always the same, you know? Yeah, I'll let you read it. Fondation Malay, Malay Prairie, or well, Malay, it probably has another, uh, some meaning as well. Um, yeah, cantonal for the cantons of Switzerland. Uh, I, I can't do this very quickly, I'm very sorry. And here it says, you know, the... Um, um, uh, yeah, then the United Nations, Nations Unies, that means United Nations, and uh, the fight against violence against women. You know? And this is the domestic violence. It's only, it's against men. I mean, some women, they drive you completely crazy, yeah? And then you just, you know, you slap on them or something, leave me alone, or, you know, I've worked the whole day, and you know, then, then you've got these infernal trios, you know, trying to take your children, you know. And um, so the, 
violence conjugale means uh, the violence in a in a couple. Well, this is better. Yeah, feminist again, feminist, feminist. I mean, they are feminists. Why? why the, yeah, feminist, feminist, violent men are violent. So you know the feminists, and of course they're pink list killers. Eh? Here again, feminist, violence, men are violent. Oh, the the violence under the angle of the m masculine domination. Well, there you go. Man did it again. Beaten women, femme, battu, beaten. It's almost the same. Battu, beaten. You see, uh, physical violence. I only talk about the physical violence, not about the other violence. Eh? It's against the man, I tell you. It's always the same. It's the same with this so-called bodybuilders in the US, eh? these vets for child rescue. Violence, in inequalities, uh, farm. And why are you in, in, in France? It's all la femme, la femme, la femme. Well, this is the French speaking part in Switzerland. Uh, the violence, of the les hommes, the man, against les femmes, the women. Yeah? We're always the ones who did it, eh? But we have to die in all these wars, eh? And then they say they're the victims of violence. This is all a setup by Pharaoh. And don't you think, your women, that they, you know, do this with your man, that they're not going to do it with you when we are all gone and we're almost gone now, eh? Don't you think they're not going to do the same with you? As it's already happening, there's so many women that are in this alliance with Pharaoh, so they don't think twice of taking the vaccination, and they're dying right now. Right now. Uh, the mother of Elvis, Elvis had to go back because his mother is dying uh, because of a blood cloth, because of the, um, the Berg War vaccination. Uh, with all their nanotechnology and it's making like antennas out of us. Yeah, terrorism, the intimate terrorism, they call it. Are you crazy? Intimate terrorism, what a sick mind, eh? Yeah, feminist, sex, sexist, violent. Oh, we men are horrible, you know? Yeah. Yeah, there's the prairie again. Same name as where they want the kiddies. The, this is bad, people. This is very bad. Yeah, protection, hébergement. It means um, give a place for this poor woman. Um, it's very difficult to read it this this fast for you. Eh? Uh, I'm very sorry. Usually, I I do my videos a bit quicker. I'm sorry. I hope it doesn't get boring. Yeah, the Fondation Malé Prairie. Well, there's the word mal in it. It means uh, bad, evil, mal. Uh, la femme et l'homme. Bloody hell, don't you have anything else to do, eh? Well, here's the clinic. Oh, yes, the clinic of La Prairie. I told you, this is the clinic where they need the children to make the um, the youth elixir. Here it is, the clinic. Here it is. And, uh, oh yeah, okay, here they are. Here's the infernal trio. The two feminist pink list killers, uh, man are so bad, and their pharaonic master, Gnuzo. And this is 2020, you know? And they all still, yeah, you know, it's a lot of, and they're all living on our backs, you know, they get a lot of um, subsidies, making their wonderful careers at the university on our backs, just living and, and sucking our energy up, you know. Well, you can read the whole thing, just punch pause. Uh, the University of Quebec. Well, you all, you all know, know what happened with the children there in Quebec, eh, in the uh, in the orphanage, and the the British royal house and all that. So their agenda of Freemason Gnuzel and his feminist assistants 
is the destabilization of the family to disempower the males into nothing and to make pinkless killers out of our children through making the parents powerless, exempt of all our natural rights in the hands of the world's gnusus and their female helpers. In this unholy alliance, being the true essence of the Adam and Eve story, and the snake as the one on Pharaoh's head, talking our women into this unholy alliance. On a dark night of the Ius Prime Noctis, inside Pharistocracy's castle, leading to the rape of humanity. This is the true story of Adam and Eve and the snake of Pharaoh, leading to the hyena alliance of the pink list killers with Pharaoh against the man and our sons. So I've <coughs> put the issue forward to my jaywalker friends in Israel and the USA who told me that their jaywalker women stayed 100% faithful to their man. Therefore I know Pharaoh decided a final solution, being one of the reasons of this here. Well, look carefully at this picture and feel the energy and what this jaywalker woman to the right is radiating, even still 80 years later, being the strongest person in the entire picture, not obeying orders of these dogs of war and Nazi baby killers, not being real man in her eyes, staying faithful to her man and what she believes in. So Rabbi Moshe from Los Angeles, he wrote me back this here. The Jewish women, while slaves in Egypt 3,300 years ago, resisted Egyptian attempts to woe women away from their husbands. They debased the men in front of their wives, but the women stayed faithful to their husbands because they stayed loyal and faithful to their tradition and heritage from our patriarchs and matriarchs. Thus that became the paradigm for the rest of Jewish history. The closer the Jewish women stay to their Torah faith, the closer they remain to their husbands and uh, families. The opposite for those women who strayed from Torah through Judaism. And Pharaoh doesn't like that, eh? They're like soft targets, you know, to split up the family so they can get the children. Similar to this final solution, the aristocracy did by burning the good European women at the stakes. Concept of three obelisks, meaning our masters did it. And all descendants of Pharaoh and the initiated ones, they see here square and compass. Here's the concept of three, the ones who did it, our masters standing for the compass, and the triangle of the hierarchy in the side of the pyramid, that's them. And the concept of four for the square, which is the, the lower side of the pyramid, the base of the pyramid, meaning us, the people who are down at the, the hierarchy. So it says square and compass, meaning our masters burned us and they burned us, the people, the concept of four because these women didn't want this alliance with Pharaoh and betray the man. Concept of three obelisks, meaning our masters did it. And in both cases of jaywalkers and European women, fire consuming the innocent and the defenseless, death by fire in ancient Egypt. In ancient Egypt, several incidents of burning alive perceived rebels are attested to. Senusret I is said to have rounded up the rebels in campaign and burned them as human torches. And look here, Pharaoh Ramesses III 
was assassinated. The non-nobles who had participated in the plot were burned alive because the Egyptians believed that without a physical body, one could not enter the afterlife. This would explain why Pentaware, the prince whose mother instigated the would-be coup, was most likely strangled or hanged himself as a royal. He would have been spared this ultimate fate. Here you can see the next generation of Swiss sisters of Isis getting taught to burn the good women on Swiss Templars Day. August the 1st. And in the Middle Ages, the Pope's Swiss Guard was a huge army performing all the wishes of the Swiss Sisters of Isis for their masters, Pharaoh. Until the winds will change the direction of the fire. A hey, Swiss, a hey, Gnuzu. I will make the winds turn. You hear? What happened on the three crosses at Gotha Coburg? Well, I will tell you what happened. It's a concept of three crosses by the fair aristocracy, meaning they did it. And the cross has a square in it for the concept of four, saying square and compass, and tools to draw the pyramid with, the holy number seven, three plus four, killing Adonai the most hated man by the brother, Hood. The cross, concept of four, for us the people, down at the square, base of the pyramid, getting crucified on the concept of four, through which they square the circle and cement the bond. In Icelandic, horse is ross. In Dutch, ross. In German, ross. And in Old High German, ross all equally resolvable into a Horus. Already two times I had stigmata in the morning and the visions are getting clearer and clearer with the veil separating the other side getting thinner and thinner. I will make the winds turn, Swizzy, for my name is Horus. Yeah, that's a funny name, eh? Look at that. A, a wanker. Here's one wanker, wanker number six. The other one is wanker number, I don't know what. Two wankers. Uh, this, they're probably Swiss. Spit a few So you like my videos? No, I don't like your videos. Sean is a, is a Zionist agent, please. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, they wonkers. Hi, everyone. I'm trying out something new here in this video. So I made a collage with uh, one picture on this side and one on the other side. As I'm, it's something new for me. I've never done this before because it was very hard, you know, being a homeless. But at the moment, I'm uh, for the last year, I've been staying somewhere, so I've got time to do this. And uh, these are some pictures from the previous film. Uh, Arrogance is the mother of ignorance. So I'm trying to make you a little bit less ignorant of the things going on. <laughs> so. So this guy on the left hand side, which is definitely an ancestor of President Zelensky. They even bear the same name because this guy's name of this family used to be Zelensky. And they came from um, the east of uh, Hungary. But before that, they probably came from the Ukraine. And they changed their names and Alexander von Zemlinsky. So they added an M, Zemlinsky. Well, it's the same one. Um, and emigrated to, uh, to Austria. So this is Alexander von Zemlinsky. 
So he's of the nobility. And this is the jaywalker nobility or the jay runner nobility. As the jaywalkers, they are real runners. They ran away from Pharaoh with the Exodus. Then they ran away from the Romans in Jerusalem with the, um, the genocide of the Romans starting and the Masada. And then they ran away from Spain and the Inquisition. Then they ran away from Switzerland in 1776, where they got terrorized away. And they finally ended all up in the East, like this family here in the East of Europe. And finally, it became this. So these are no jaywalkers. They are pharaohs, just like French nobility, German nobility, the British royals, the, uh, the Belgian nobility or whatever, the whole world. Every people has a nobility, including the jaywalkers. It's nothing peculiar about this. And um, so the jaywalkers, they are definitely not the uh, like the God's beloved people or a thing like this. No, no. They were Pharaoh beloved slaves. So just look at the eyes, you know, it's very similar with this here on top of it here. His descendant here has the same. Look at the nose, this little tip here. You get a little bit like blown up here. You got the same one here. The same little African ears. These are African ears, you know. I mean, Egypt, it's in Africa, isn't it? Ancient Egypt. And a lot of Nubians, I can't say the N-word, everything is forbidden. So I don't know what to say anymore. So I call them the Nubians, yeah? They got the same little round ears. Just look at it. And this guy has the same. He's got the same ears as this one here. The same little squeeze together mouth here, like this one here. With this here underneath. Same hair. The same front here of everything. It's the same lineage. I mean, it's so obvious. They bear the same name. It's nobility, as I told you, you will not become the president of a country if you're not part of Pharaoh's nobility and if you're not in a Freemason lodge. So, so I especially made this uh, collage, as it is called, which is a French word from collé which means the verb coller, it means to um, to glue. So um, this is a glue picture, so to speak, a collar in French, it's called collage. In English, it's been pronounced college. Like in America, the college, you know, they, they probably glue something on you, you know, probably something you don't want really, <laughs> the college, the collage yeah okay so same lineage i have no doubt zemlinski zelinski the they come from the east this guy is in the east in europe that's where they come from they're all pharaohs so the next collage you see uh king louis the 14th with a fleur de lis in yellow with three things on it and uh, on blue just as this thing here it has three things and it is on blue and there is ukrainian nobility who married into the french nobility which i've shown in the video uh, arrogance is the mother of ignorance so the the ukrainian crest it's um, definitely another way of, a modern way of uh, showing the, um, the fleur de lis. Well, actually it's not that modern, it's from the year thousand, but now it's a bit, it's been a bit modernized maybe. Anyway, I explain it all in my film, Arrogance is the Mother of uh, Ignorance. It's all the same bloodlines, they use the same symbols, the same descendants, and they're, they're ruling the whole world. So if anyone wants one of these uh, collages for one of your websites or whatever, just give me a buzz. My email is in my channel in the about section. 
and I'll be happy to send it to you so this information gets spread. Um, it's free. I don't want any money for it. Um, my work is for free anyway. And um, just leave me the honor and say it that you got it from me. That's all. That's all I'm asking. So it's a fleur de lis of the um, of the rapist king Volodymyr the Great. So you really want to go and fight there with the uh, the symbol of a rapist king on your shoulder patch? And you, you know you you want you want that? I don't think so. I it's all a trap anyway. It's the Horus Matrix. They want you dead. So it's still the same as back then. Only in those days they didn't have any T-shirts, so they put it on a robe. So everybody could see it, you know, to um, to transmit the information. It's just a, a way of transmission. And now they just put it on a T-shirt, you know. But same thing's going on. <laughs> can you imagine King Louis is in a T-shirt like this? No? Well, I can. <laughs> just look at this. Look at Zelensky. You know, and this was an incredibly intelligent guy. And the longest serving monarch in the whole history of mankind. Longer than Queen Elizabeth, he was a monarch and a ruling king. Longer than Ramses the Great of Egypt. This is the longest ever ruling monarch in history, Louis the Fourteenth, And highly intelligent, very intelligent. I have a lot of respect for his intelligence. Um, he wrote some things, it's uh, hardly imaginable. And of course, uh, Mr. Zelensky, he's intelligent too. And, you know, that's why they chose uh, for the job being a president, they chose a clown to do this, you know. An actor who can, um, who can memorize a script or a speech like the New Year New Year's speech. He, he, they are good at memorizing it and saying it in the, in the right intonation with the right facial expressions. And I mean, an actor, right? So this short video is like a recap of the very long video I made, Arrogance is the Mother of um, Ignorance, the uh, exclusion game. And uh, it, it would have gotten a little bit too long if I would have put if I would have put this in it as well. So here we can see the fleur de lis, the same colors, yellow as the uh, Ukrainian crest. The same triple thing here, the SAR symbol and the pharaonic reed here. And it's all on a blue background. I mean, it's the same people. It's the same symbols. It's the same bloodline. And uh, they've been ruling us for 2,000 years. You know. uh, there's no doubt. So, again, if you want to have these uh, screenshots, these uh, collages, uh, just give me a buzz and I'll, I'll send you the pics. Uh, try to spread it, put it on a website, and uh, I think that's a good idea. Yeah. So I'm very bad in the technique, you know. I'm I'm not good at all this. Uh, uh, I'm a historian. I'm I'm not in. The, um, I'm very bad in computer techniques and everything. So i wanted to do this you know for the last 12 years with uh, through all the circumstances and the terror i couldn't i wasn't able to um to wrap my head around all this so now i had a quiet moment so uh so i could do this it's just uh, part of the burnout you know so here you see in the month of December, uh, Zelensky with his wife and President Macron and with his uh, wife, I think her name is Brigitte, 
um, in Paris. So he was traveling a lot, Zelensky, you know, to get some weapons together. Um, I mean, it's it's all it's all theater, you know, just uh, so the people, the Ukrainians think, ah, the West, that's great, that's what we need. Hey, eh? we, we we want to join the European Community and America. But they don't know what a dictatorship it is in the West, you know. Maybe some of them know. I mean, look at Julian Assange, what they do to that guy and what they do to me, you know, putting people like us in prison for nothing. It's 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 worse than Russia. I tell you, they they murder people in the in the West, you know. So dear dear Russians and Ukrainian, the West is worse. You know murder people put people in prison for forever the west is not free it's no it's no freedom so but because because of the war you know they all hope you know oh yeah let's in the in the, in the ukraine and in russia oh, the west that's the good guys are helping us we're gonna have freedom finally no you're not gonna have freedom forget it so anyway it's about this uh, symbol here and I just um, make another little picture and uh, because part of the NATO symbol is not on it you know that's why I'm, I'm bad with this you know because I have to measure it up so I show another part of it but anyway and here this is red for the old world order the red house of Pharaoh in the middle where they come from with white on the side you know, through the ties and through these symbols, you know, they're spreading messages. They always do. You know, it's still a miracle they don't have a message on their mask, you know. Okay, there we go. So I just took only this part, you know. You all see the swastika, which is, of course, a uh, like a Photoshop inside the... Uh, because, but that is what it is, really. And there is a swastika in it. And it seems like she, she's doing like uh, Heil Hitler, you know, putting her hands up. But anyway, it's it's a reference to the NATO symbol, you know. And I explained all the rest to you. There's a circle here for the concept of three, the compass. Here's a square. It says square and compass. I wonder why there's orange, which is probably a reference to the house of orange. And uh, there is also an orange in France. Maybe that's related to that as well. But it's it's definitely this here is a reference to this. And this is what it all Zelensky visit. It's all about this and all the goodies you know they want to give. So here as well, you know, it has the concept of four, one, two, three, four, and the circle is the concept of three. So it says square and compass all over. Just as this thing here, you know, with a square here. Where is the square? And it's also always in a circle. You know, just look at the symbols. They're everywhere. You know, it's not a coincidence. And um, here we see Zelensky with the Ukrainian Fleur de Lis. When he went to the American Congress a couple of weeks back, seeing his equivalent here the uh, pharaoh of the of america look at the color of the tie Oy, exactly the same color as the mask of uh, king tut Tutankhamun. Uh, even quite similar ears i must say very similar so anyway with this here these colors he's giving away his bloodline and if I look at the ears, it's uh, it's quite similar, you know. They're always giving information and messages through the ties here. Yeah. And blue for the war and gold, it probably stands for white, the new world order. And um, anyway, he's got white here as well for the new world order. Look at the ties, look at the colors, people. Because a color is a um, um, is it gives away a certain information about uh, symbols and uh, a message. It's a secret messages, 
and they know amongst each other they know all about the colors which i'm trying to explain to you here with all the proofs so there's not it's not a coincidence he's got the uh the tutankhamun colors in his tie there's no coincidence neither is this symbol here there's no coincidence it's not a coincidence either a simple clown becomes the president of a country of a very recalcitrant people you know who, uh, who did the maidan revolution and they kicked out their own presidents so they need a guy you know who makes them laugh and i told you laughing is one of the techniques with which they open up the back door so they get all the the um the pink list killer orientation inside you know so you accept it put it in a film with some humor so you love them then you accept it you know it's like wrapping it in in a nice christmas paper or something you know that's what they do so it needed a clown who makes them laugh so all the people say oh he's a nice bloke yeah he's one of us he makes us laugh oh, he's a good old chap eh and they accept him and you know these pharaohs with their king tots ties they know very very well they need a very special convincing person at the head of the ukraine because these people after how many years of the soviet empire and everything they're not going to accept anything anymore you know they're full of it you know they had enough of it and here we can see the butcher of donbass having the same tie blue and gold golden tie yeah so this is the butcher of donbass president poroshenko and uh, poroshenko gave the orders to the um, to the pharaohs in the ukrainian army from a distance of 40 kilometers to shoot at innocent civilians in the east of the Ukraine, which led the other pharaoh, Mr. Putin, on the other side to, um, well, to take uh, the Crimea and to attack eastern Ukraine, which they all concluded together because the president of Ukraine, he's big pals with the president of Russia. But they need to sell it to the people somehow. So this is how they do it. And how can anybody say, you know, from a, a distance of 40 kilometers away, or I think it was 47, it's 50 kilometers away, when they shoot they shot with those cannons into the Donbass on civilians, killing many people. Uh, I think that was 2014. Then it was the Ukrainian people doing this. No, nobody can know. You know, there was this American guy making videos about it. How does he know? He's just assuming it must have been the Ukrainians. No, the Ukrainian people didn't do this. It's this pharaoh here. And he is a pharaoh. You know, he's giving it away. He's got the, the King Volodymyr the rapist symbol here. He got the King Tut uh, tie. This is the butcher of Donbass, you know, leading to the Ukraine war, like uh, in 2022, which which is all in the conspiracy with Mr. Putin. You know, they just tried to sell it to the people, so the people um, had a reason, you know, to hate the Ukrainians. But no, the Ukrainian people didn't do this. You know, it's the pharaohs. You, you just need a couple of cannons to do this, you know, and and to secure it, like. Uh, uh, put a perimeter around it, you know, like five kilometers or 10 kilometers perimeter. So no, nobody will see the guy shooting the cannons and, and nobody did see it. You know, just, just hear the incoming, you know, just some, just the shelling like 50 kilometers away. So evil people, it's the butcher of, um, of the Donbass leading to a lot of millions and millions of russians to think that the ukrainians did that and killing russians in the ukraine no this is not the ukrainian this is an, a descendant of king tut just like the other one from the americas you know this is how they do it you just they just swap uniforms you know and i mean the proofs are all here you know with these nice collages 
and um, unfortunately, I'm not going to show you know some. I, I did my videos on on Putin, and so this is just you know because of my last video, but uh, it, it will it will all take too long if I do the same collage with Putin, and I already did that, you know, and uh, well, not the collages, but the uh, the video. So it's just because it's right after that long video where I'm showing. Uh, all the Thai colors, with uh, they're all the same. All these politicians, they want to kill us, you know, kill the patriarchy, as they say. So here you can see the two King Tut Thai boys standing here together. The blue and golden Thai of uh, King Tut. It's not a coincidence. Always look at the Thais, people. And uh, so this is his inauguration. I don't know what, I think 2014 or 15 after the Maidan. And he's um, taking the oath on this big, thick book. I have no idea what kind of a book it is. Uh, maybe some Ukrainian can tell me. It would be very important to know what is this book. It probably is a book by uh, King Volodymyr or something, uh, how to rape women or, you know. Uh, like a, a rapist manual of the um, for the first right to use prime noctis of these masters, you know, and like uh, all their various Jeffrey Epsteins and all this, the Epenstein. So, you think that's a coincidence? Same colors, right? You really think so? No, I tell you, it's not a coincidence. And these are very special occasions. I mean, this is the moment he's receiving uh, King uh, King Zelensky of the Ukraine uh, in front of the Congress, you know, to sell it to the American people that they uh, they need to pay more taxes to pay for all the weaponry. And here too, it's a very important moment of the inauguration. So apparently, on these in very important moments, they 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 take out the King Tut Thai. Yeah, it really looks like it. So here you see King Poroshenko with his hammer, which happened to be exactly the same as the Pharaoh of e Upper Egypt. So this is the crown of the White House of the Perhet, the white, the white crown. And look, it even has this little t titty on it, like here. Like here, another titty on it, or there's a little crown or whatever. And I have all the reason to believe that this is not even a copy made in the Ukraine, but this is the original pharaonic hammer or scepter, the scepter hammer of Pharaoh to beat down the disobedient people with, together with their Freemason loincloth here, or sh uh, skirt, the Freemason skirt, that's where it come from. And the moment he had his inauguration happening right after he started shelling innocent civilians in the Donbass. You know. And I, I, tell, I repeat again, it was not the Ukrainian people who did this. It's the masters. You know, There's so many of these pharaonic nobility in the Ukraine everywhere. And they just did the shelling. You know? in the name of the Ukrainian people. And all the Ruskies believed it because they all got brainwashed by the other Pharaoh, the Black Prince. So I've got all the reason to believe that this is an original Pharaonic scepter hammer. Even, you know, where they hold it, a little bit sticking out, just like here. And with this little dot on it, just like this one here. It's exactly the same apparatus, uh, our masters. So these ones are the descendants of these ones, their ancestors, which I've been proving you for many, many years now. So and I finally made it with my burnout and my situation to uh, present you these lovely collages. So here he is again, the butcher of the Donbass. You know, 
killing his own people with his King Tut tie. And this is the other pharaoh. You see, this is a different crown. This is the red crown of the old world's order, the old vertical rule of the Pertasser of Lower Egypt. But he's having the same hammer with this little titty on it, just like this one here. It's the same hammer. You know? So for Upper Egypt and Lower Egypt, they had the same hammer, which is nowadays, it is in the Ukraine. It is the very same pharaonic hammer, people, because this is so important for them. And as in those days, you know, beating up their own people and other peoples, now the butcher is beating up the Ukrainian people and the Russian people because these people are not very obedient to Pharaoh, you know. It's only 23% that took Pharaoh's poison in their veins. So this is a good reason to beat them up, you know. And uh, the Ukrainians, they, um, they kicked out their own president, which is another good reason to beat them up with Pharaoh's hammer. And this is what he's actually thinking at this very moment, and this, this bloke as well. Oh, he's got the same tie, I think, blue and um, blue gold. They're all in the same conspiracy. So here's the other one, the clown of the Ukraine. The same hammer. And so now we can have a good look at these uh, things here. This is um, um, this pharaonic collar. And so here's the hammer beating down the enemies and the people. And this looks like the rudder on these boats, you know, in, in, in Venice, the gondola, gondola. And look, here's this thing which is on, on the, at the front, at the bow of those um, Egyptian boats, which the Ital Italians are using, exactly the same. So I don't remember what this hieroglyph, what it means, but uh, there it is. I, they are the sunbarks of Pharaoh. And this is what they put on the, at the bow. So I wonder what he's thinking here. I think I've got a pretty good idea. He's already dreaming of total control over the Ukrainian people after the war. You know, and look how he's squeezing it. I think, yeah, yeah, let's beat them down with their Maidan uprising. We're going to beat them down. There he is again, the clown of the Ukraine, together with his ancestors. And I was thinking the color of Lapis Lazuli, but this is not Lapis Lazuli, this is Turquoise. And turquoise is a reference to the pharaonic goddess Hathor. And Hathor is the protector of women. Well, let's kill the patriarchy, right? Got that stuff again. So, and here we can see the sun hieroglyph with this thing in the middle. Usually it's round, but it can be a square. And with two bars on each side, which I filmed for you in the Pharaoh show a lot. And uh, look at how the clown, how he's smiling, how he's laughing. He's laughing his head off. And this is one of the two pillars, Yashin and Boas. In uh, I guess this is the uh, Ukrainian parliament or something. So it's carved in wood, the Yashin and Boas, the two pillars of Freemasonry. And it looks like a typical Freemason, this guy here. And these things here, it's of course the top of a pyramid here. I've got cut off a little bit. But. So this is Lapis Lazuli, and it is a reference to Hathor. Oh, let's kill the patriarchy, eh? And this is the... Um, it's also very much related to the... Um, to the Horus Matrix. Let's kill the fathers so we can raise the, um, the boys new from scratch into obedient little boys so there will be no more father to son tradition and uh you know this is um the stubborn eastern mentality father to son you know they want to break it 
with the hammer of Hathor. So they can recreate the, uh, the Eastern Europeans into little obedient Westerners. So there's the clown again with the, uh, the pharaonic hammer of Hathor with the turquoise. Kill the patriarchy stuff. Here you can see part of a bull. I cut it off because uh, he got the hammer again. Yeah, the pharaonic hammer. Just grabbing the citizens by the hair. <clears throat> Which is the situation we got in the West. Is exactly this situation. And this is what they want for the Ukraine as well. In the West, you know, we have to be obedient little dwarfs. You know, you can't be a man. You can't defend yourself. You can't even have a fight. Um, and the women are always right. You know, the women, you have to, you, have to you, you need to have yourselves beaten up by women in the West, which I've shown you on several occasions. When there is a divorce, the women takes all the children. So this is the image of man. So then why, where the whole narrative in the West is based upon obedience, making, making little soy boys out of our sons, then why all of a sudden the entire hero narrative in the Ukraine, it's a, it's a total discrepancy between the West and the Western narrative in the Ukraine. They only talk about her heroism, be a hero. While in the West, this is completely forbidden to be a hero. You know, so be careful, dear Ukrainians. Very soon after the war, when all the heroes are dead through the Horus Matrix, you will have to obey the same narrative as in the West and be a little a little nothing a little obedient slave a little dwarf just like this dwarf here otherwise uh, king pharaoh here he's going to beat you up with a stick you know and this is the aim of the ukraine uh, so be careful i mean why the difference and the discrepancy it's a total discrepancy between the narrative in the west and the western narrative for the ukraine so you have to ask yourself, what is going on? They're talking about hero this, hero, Ukrainian hero. He was a hero, give him a medal. We want to attract the Western heroes. Wait a minute, Western heroes? Here we can't even be a hero. You can't even defend yourself. You know, you have to obey and say, yes, Mr. President, uh, like, uh, like Mr. Jesus tied upon the cross. You know, you've got your hands tied up. You can't defend yourself. You've got your feet nailed. You can't run away. Not even the jaywalkers can run anymore, or the jay runners. You can only nod your head and say, yes, Mr. President, please don't knock me on my head with your pharaonic hammer. You know, and mark my words, he's going to reveal his true identity very soon. Mark my words. I know what's coming. So just think of the, you know, of the um, discrepancy in the narrative. Although it's the same ones having the narrative, you know. They just want to lure you into a war, you know, so you die. They want to get rid of all the warriors. So for the next step and the, and the, the, the final blow on humanity until they, they make total control, arti in artificial intelligence, robots out of us. They have to get rid of all the warriors. So this is why you know, they want to kill all the warriors. They don't want any more men who will defend humanity. And they've almost succeeded. They will succeed. Uh, I believe it's the end of humanity anyway. You know, they're too stupid. So here's the uh, Donbass butcher again with Pharaoh's hammer with the colors of Hathor. 
And uh, can anybody tell me what this extraterrestrial, uh, what the alien is doing here? Definitely having a helmet, huh? And I can't see the eyes. He's got like a, a screen in front of it. And this here. So this is the, uh, again, the Pharaoh of Upper Egypt of the, um, the White House, the bare head. So they both had the hammer. Look at his eyes, you know. You trust this guy? So apparently a lot of people didn't trust him, so it needed a clown. Now they've got a clown. So here we see Poroshenko. He probably has his hammer in his other hand. And um, together with this uh, pink list killer here, who's doing the conspiracy symbol of the Freemasons. So they are definitely in a conspiracy here. And the organization of uh, Sir Elton John, the pink list killer, his organization are saying these sort of lovely things, destroy the patriarchy in pink with the unicorn and this red eyes here, which is one of their symbols. So what's going on? I mean, if this is what they want to do, destroy the patriarchy, and he's definitely part of them, otherwise he wouldn't be together with the president of a big country, and who, you know, giving this symbol away here. So what are they talking about? Eh? Which is quite obvious, of course. And they got, again, they got the rainbow in their symbol, you know, with the lightning and all this, you know, this is a, um, a reference to the deluge with a lot of lightning. And after the deluge, uh, the guy up in the skies, the all powerful bloke, he said, uh, well, I'll never do this again. That's why I show a rainbow. So that's why these here, they get overconfident because they know that the divine power are never going to do it again. So they're getting very overconfident, as you can see here, and saying destroy the patriarchy. Or is he just doing like he doesn't know about this? Well, of course he does. Of course he does. All these pink list killers, they know about this. And this is actually what's happening. You know, killing the patriarchy for the Horus Matrix. Kill the fathers, the patriarchy. Pater, which means father. And um, so raise the kids new without the father. So these ones here can grab them, you know, for their obvious reasons. So in this collage, we can see it all happening here. Right? So if you want to have the collage, just give me a buzz and I'll send it to you. All for free. And of course, this pharaoh of Russia here wants the same. They all want to kill the patriarchy and have the man kill each other. Only he's having the opposite narrative because the Roskies want to hear something else. They don't want to hear anything about what these pink list killers say. So, then these pharaohs just tell the people what they want to hear. And at the same time, there will be such a gap between the Ruskies and the Ukrainians and how they are politically indoctrinated that it sets the um, all, you know, for a war. You know, so when there's such a gap in their such a difference in, in way of thinking and, you know, what they want um, to create a, a war. So this is why he's um, telling the opposite. So as you can see here, how he's holding his hand and all that with a cannon, which is going to be the result of this, kill the patriarchy. 
They're all the same. In spite of the fact they're telling us completely different you know, stories. As this one is telling the Russian people a completely different story as um, the pharaohs in the West and in, in the Ukraine are telling their people. You know, so, uh, so the people, you know, so they won't accept each other's ideas anymore. A, another discrepancy as a basics for war upon a difference in skin color, a difference in race or a difference in language, a difference in religion, a difference in wealth. This is what they always do. Create a difference. And one of the ways to create a difference is by the narrative of the different pharaohs who are uh, quite successfully indoctrinating the uh, different peoples around the earth to create two blocks. You know. And the masters, they use several techniques to, to achieve their goals. So this is the Bund Deutscher Medals with the Nazi symbol here. Germans during the Second World War doing exactly the same things as these Ukrainian women with high heels. Can you imagine? You know, because these this is the Horus Matrix, you know. So the men think, oh, we have to defend these lovely legs because we love these legs. You know, so they all die in a war because of these lovely legs and the rest what goes with it, you know. Well, actually, the women, they can defend themselves much far more better than a man, I'll tell you. So, okay, well. So, this is the Horus Matrix, you know, kill the man. And they use all these techniques like the two ingredients, war and reproduction. So this is what they want, you know, uh, kill the man and then r reproduce, make babies and, uh, and, and make them new from scratch, not uh, anymore after the image of a, rec of a creation, the image of the divine, no. Another image by the masters, you know, mold them into pinkless killers and obedient obedient slaves and they use these women for it and um, at the head of this organization was a uh, this uh pinkless killer woman with her friend Jutta rudiger or rudiger and um i suppose it's the same thing going on another pinkless killer at the top of this you know uh, it's always the same thing. It's um, it's a big evil which we are against that try to destroy humanity. You know. And uh, yeah, so another collage for you. And in the end, the masters who are using definitely the same colors here as their ancestors, blue and gold or blue and white. The gold is here, an owl and all this pharaonic stuff on it. This was on St. James Island, Jeffrey Epstein von Epenstein. Remember the Göring Castle von Epenstein by the Jaywalker nobility, just pharaohs. Forget about Jaywalker, they're pharaohs. And um, so, because there's no, there are no more men. The patriarchy is gone, so there are no more men to defend the children. And this is the result, raping children here and these sort of things. And nobody's going to do anything against it. And that's the result of all these wars and all the horrors matrices. And we see it happening again. On the left side, I filmed in Boulogne-sur-Mer in France, an original copy of the pharaonic sun bark and see how they stare it at the back, you know, like, uh, like a rudder. And this is the original 
a gondola boat for the tourists. Well, I guess in these days they, it wasn't for the tourists yet. This is an old, very old picture, maybe from the 19th century or something. And to see how it's exactly the same shape of the boat, like a banana, and uh, with a cabin in the middle, and uh, with the same rudder. And this here, what I will explain to you later, is the hieroglyph of uh, meaning the feather of Ma'at, the original pharaonic hieroglyph. And in fact, um, Ma'at, she's very much the goddess, she's very much related to what you see here. I'll explain it to you in the middle. In a, in a, in a moment. So this was back then. This is like uh, 100 years ago or 150 years ago in Venice in Italy. So the pharaohs also had a people. They had the gods. Here are the gods. Then there were the pharaohs who became Europe's nobility and nobility all over the world. Their slaves, the J, the J runners, they ran away. And they also had a people. And actually, when pharaohs and their gods probably went to Europe, first they went to Greece and then they went to, uh, to Italy and founded the Roman Empire. Then, uh, through the marriage of Cleopatra with Caesar, Egypt became a, a Roman province. And we know at a certain time, all the people in Egypt, they left. Where did they go? Because the Arabs who are living there now, they are not the people of ancient Egypt, not at all. They came from Saudi Arabia, especially after the uh, Islamic conquest in the 7th century, uh, not even before that. So where did they go, the people of Egypt, when Egypt became a Roman Empire? Well, they went to Rome. And this is the result. The sun bark became the Venetian gondola. You know, exactly the same boat. And I explained this in a, in a moment. This is the, uh, the feather of Ma'at which is very important for the sunbark. So it seems very far-fetched that the Italians of today, that they are the people of, uh, of ancient Egypt. Not the pharaohs, not the slaves, not the gods, no, the people. The people, you know, like who, who were rowing boats at the River Nile in those days. Because I've noticed the Italians are very different from the rest of the Europeans. And they, uh, they brought havoc to Europe and the Europeans several times. Of course, with the Romans, with the big genocide on the, on the European tribes, just like they did later on on the Indian tribes. They, they did the same on the European tribes, you know, on the white man's tribes. They did exactly the same. And then, of course, with the Nazis. So every time... And Nazism, it started in Italy with Mussolini. The word Nazi is Italian from the Italian word nationalismo, which is written with a Z, with a Z in American. As well as in English or in German, it's written with a T. So the word Nazi cannot come from the German language as it comes from Italian. So every time out of Italy, it rains havoc on the European tribes and on the Europeans. So they can't really be European, can they now? And in fact, they're not. And this is one of the proofs. And, and this is because uh, Egypt, ancient Egypt became a Roman province and they all came over. At a certain time, Egypt was empty and uh, it became a desert. And um, so these are official pharaonic hieroglyphs. You know, you see, it's, just, it's, it's very much the same, you know, with the rudder at the back, just like this guy here. Only this is missing. And uh, 
And of course, these are just the hieroglyphs, but this is the real thing. So this is a depiction actually of this here. And I guess this was the original thing because this is the, the hieroglyph uh, of the feather, the feather of Ma'at, which I explained to you. And um, so the Italian immigrants, you know, we're talking about immigrants, people talk about Turkish immigrants and Pakistani immigrants or African or Chinese or whatever, but nobody seems to talk or to think about it anymore. Uh, actually, the biggest load of immigrants in Northern and Central Europe, they are Italians and they're the first ones. But they sort of integrate. You don't hear from them anymore, except for the killings and the mafia stuff and uh, having a bigger economy than the entire European Union, probably with the you know the mafia and all the illegal stuff which which is going on. And I already explained to you who's the mafia. You know, they were the Knights Templars who settled down, and after the Crusades, they got themselves women. They made families and they started doing the same stuff as they used to do, the Knights Templars, and especially in Sicily. So they became families. They got women because inside the Knights Templars, it was forbidden to have a woman and a wife and children. It was a brotherhood and it still is. So they started to create families. So there you got your, your mafia families who come out of the Knights Templars very closely knit you know just and they they are like like an army you know with ranks and all this like the knights templars and all armies come out of the knights templars so as i told you there's a legal mafia and an illegal mafia and they all work together you know and in, i've never seen any place in the world like sicily where there's so many templar commanderies there's no other place with so many so this is definitely the sunblock of Egypt. And you find these in Italy. Eh? Well, Italy is not far away from Egypt. It's just across the dip. You know, and I noticed the same thing with uh, there are only two types of people who never take hitchhikers. And in Europe, you know, sort of the Europeans, the only ones who don't take hitchhikers are the Italians. Even Muslims and Turks and Arabs, they take hitchhikers, but not the Italians. You know. And the other ones are the Nubians. They never take hitchhikers. So they are different. You know. And, you know, when you go hitchhiking on an Italian motorway, they always hassle you, you know, call up the police. It's, it's really a fascist country. You know. I, I don't feel safe there. There's something, there's something going on there, you know. Like uh, people call it shittily nowadays, and uh, it's not far off. So we really have to, everything is going tits up nowadays, and we really have to question our history and question everything to find out by whom we're being ruled and who are, whom are their collaborators. So I was going to explain this hieroglyph to you. Well, here it is. This is the hieroglyph of the feather of Ma'at. And these arms here going up, it's the Ka, which is the soul, uh, actually, when alive. And uh, on the contrary to the Ba, is when you die, the Ba. So when you die, according to the Pharaonic uh, stories, you have to take the sun bark on the river Nile, which is going to the underworld when you, the moment you die. And then Ma'at, the goddess Ma'at, the goddess of justice. Now we have Lady Justice with the sword and the scales, which is uh, Ma'at, who became Themis in Greece. And uh, in Egypt, she was still called Ma'at, the word magistrate, magistrate. You know, it's after the word Ma'at, actually. So this is the feather. And Ma'at, she came with a feather to your soul when you're going, entering the, the afterlife. And when the weight of your heart 
equaled this feather, so being very light or being lighter, then it was okay. You could go to paradise or to the afterlife. When your heart was heavier than the feather of Ma'at, you were going to hell, where the uh, Seth, the Lord of the underworld, was. So the soul, this is the soul, Ka, it was measured with the feather of Ma'at. That's why the feather is inside the soul, which you can see here. And we find it here on the boat in Italy and uh, on the water, which is representing the Nile or the, or the, um, the Hades River going into the underworld. And where uh, your, um, you, you were being um, uh, judged for your life, you know, like a magistrate. Magistraat Ma'at. And um, so this is definitely a sunbark, or which, which they even used in ancient times like this, with this on it, probably. And this is why we find it in Italy, because they are the people of Egypt. And that's why Italians are different, and that's why we find them everywhere in Europe. The, uh, you know, working for the pharaohs especially after the Second World War, when so many European men were dead, so they needed new workers. And uh, that's all where, that's all what the pharaoh, pharaoh's nobility, where they are interested in. And, uh, and there are people who know it in Italy, but the people themselves, they don't, they don't know it anymore. You know, after three generations, the people, you know, the dumb sleeple, they don't even know anymore where they come from or who their grandparents were. They don't know it after, you know, 2,000 years later. But some of them do, especially the, uh, the Mafia families, Freemasons, nobility. They know it and we can see it, you know. That's why the uh, progress of civilization, you know, it really started in Europe through Greece and then Absolutely, the, the military progress, it started in Italy with the Romans. And how, how is it possible all of a sudden, out of nothing? Well, it's because of Egypt, you know. That's where they went to. And then when the Germanic tribes, they ransacked Rome, well, they came to France, pharaohs. But the people, they stayed here with their, you know, gondola, gondola, you know, pharaonic gondola. And especially for the Northern Europeans and the Central Europeans, you know, um, who nowadays are really slaves because of all this. They have stolen our land, just like they did with the Indians. And we're just, they're slaves, you know, they are, um, the, the Northern and Central Europeans, they, uh, they are really lost in all this, you know. So I'm just trying to give you some information who the real enemy is. You know, it's Pharaoh's nobility. What, what more proofs do you need? Again, to the right is the one I filmed in France, which is an exact copy of the sunbark, the Egyptian sunbark. You know, I mean, why, why do you need a hut if it's something mythological? You know, it was also used. That's why there is a hut, you know, so people could sit in it, which you could see in the other picture, which was used in, in Venice and probably all over Italy. Uh, exactly the same form. It's the same boat, you know, with this coming out of the water, like the front and the back. So you can you can turn around easy, you know, with all these canals here. and. Um, and here, this is uh, pharaonic. This is the feather of Ma'at to weigh your soul and uh, to uh, compare it to the weight of the feather of Ma'at, your soul. And this is, it's like Christianity, you know, like if you, you know, only if you're a good one, you go to paradise. If you're obedient, if, you're, if your soul is heavier than her feather, then you go to hell. You know? But this is not how it works. You know, the, like the ancients taught us, I believe, 
that you only go to paradise if you're brave. You know, you, you don't. It's wrong what they're saying. I mean, if 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 I were a god, would I take somebody in paradise who's an obedient slave, a sleeper and a sheeple all his life, you know, who get who, who never stands up, who has no character? Would I like that one near me, you know, in, in, in paradise and play chess with him? No way, man, I wouldn't. I would take somebody brave, you know, who has a soul, who has a character, who stands up for justice, who stands up for what he believes in. This is the way it is. It's logic, isn't it? Now, look at it. The whole building here in Venice with all the arches here and this here, it looks pharaonic here, huge and and here it looks oriental with all these arches you know this is not european and uh well the venetians they uh they 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 were in the crusades eh? they they did a lot together with the knights templars so here we see this is the soul the arms like this this is probably ma'at and she is weighing everything together you know, this is the uh, the scarabee for the reincarnation, and there are seven. You know, the concept of three here, and here's the concept of four. I mean, this is where the Freemasons they got it all from the concept of three and four. And she's weighing everything, like you know, weighing the soul, the car. This is the car, the arms like this. If it is uh, not too heavy to go into the afterlife where the rulers only want the obedient ones. You know? And uh, here's uh, Amunra, of course. And, uh, well, it's the same boat. And here again, you've got the feather of uh, Ma'at. And again here, this is what I filmed in Boulogne-sur-Mer many years ago. And this looked very medieval, making new again with a medieval... Uh, crest and everything here and here the feather of Ma'at with the gondola the pharaonic sunbark for the tourists and if you just cross the dip from Venice to Africa where well, you get into Egypt and here again a hieroglyph with the sunbark with the rudder here just as this guy he has the rudder here and uh, the same form of the boat uh, with the Ma'at feather, an old church here with all the Roman stuff on it, and uh, know, Roman em enemies. So apparently this is a, a good concept. I mean, this is uh, going on for 6,000 years probably, the, uh, the concept of making a boat like this. So that would be a pity if you leave Egypt like they did 2,000 years ago not take their technology of uh, boat building with them. And this is what happened. I mean, apparently it's a good technique. Eh? It's quite steerable because, you know, the, the you don't have to push the end and the beginning through the water because it's out of the water. You know? It's only for, you know, to stand. So there's only a little bit of part which is really in the water so it's really uh, maneuverable i suppose that's why you only need one stick and uh, a thing to hold it just like this one here where it's also out of the water here and here and uh, so it's a good technology and uh, you know why not hang on to it and bring it with you to the colonies and the colonies was uh, europe so i really hope that the ancient god Ancient Egypt are not too happy with Homi Ross. And it seems that there are like um, this guy here with this alien alien bow. He's like looking, where's Homi Ross? I'm gonna shoot him. And he's very confident with his arms like crossed here. We'll get him. Don't worry, we'll get him. This one here. I'm on the lookout. I've got special abilities. I can see in the future. We'll get Homie Ross. We'll get him.
we are dealing with a highly developed enemy with a far more superior intelligence than even the brightest human slaves. So here to the left, it says the white slave, the white European slave, the peasant. And here to the right, it says here, master of Pharaoh's nobility in a thousand year old feudal system. The white slave has been a slave for 2000 years of these here on the right hand side, Pharaoh's nobility. The masters are highly organized, whereas humans are everyone for him or herself. And they make use of demons and other witchcraft practices that were already widely spread in ancient Egypt. And here to the left, it says the master race. And to the right here, it says the white slave race. So here you see the teeth, the uh, Europeans like head in medieval times, and which is coming back today with all the drug addicts everywhere. With these here making a lot of money through the international drugs business. The human males have always been categorized into two groups the alpha males and the beta males, the leaders and the followers. But lately there has been talk about a third category. Here it says Swiss police bully. And I've always seen other men as dogs who are either loud mouthed alpha macho types whom I hate, or they are obedient little beta poodles whom I despise. I always felt more like a cat doing its own things. And when the menacing alpha dogs came barking too near, I just scratched them without a word. And in silent mode, without all that ridiculous alpha stuff, blowing themselves up and whatnot. And what does any bold alpha or beta dog do when scratched by a cat? Yeah, they whine, squeak, and run for help to their masters. Just like here. Hello, police, please help me. I'm so afraid of that cat. I'm just a poor alpha doggy doggy. And I always had the same with these macho alpha aggressors slipping into the victim's role and call for the police. He hit me. I didn't do anything. Therefore, I was quite pleased to hear that recently the psychologists finally discovered a third male category that doesn't want to lead as an alpha, nor does it want to be led as a beta, the Zygma male, as in Zygma Sean, Pharaoh's nuisance, not fitting into any societal role model, doesn't take any orders, doesn't feel like giving any orders either, just leave me alone, says Sigma the cat. 
go alpha beta yourselves it says the sigma male busted this is why in ancient egypt there are so many beings with different animal heads who are no gods but just different psychological types of man like sobek the crocodile character for instance which is greedy and could best be compared to a swiss banker or to swissy zepp blatter the swiss fifa villain whom you can see here but okay this film is not about egypt's animal pantheon we can do that some other time that would take too much time now and here it says sobek the croc or sobek the creepy croc and the egyptian sobek is synonymous for greed the sigmas make up less than 0.1 percent of all males and don't need to lose so much energy to that stupid alpha beta role model play to impress the environment here are 11 personality traits of a sigma male one he likes to fly solo and is very independent two he has a mysterious personality three he likes silence four he lives life on the edge five he is extremely smart six he has a rebellious spirit seven he is never short of attention eight he has an abstract way of thinking nine he has his own distinctive style 10 he is a deep thinker and 11 he can adapt to anything so can you imagine how much valuable time you win in life when you don't need all that senseless alpha beta stuff to either have a fancy muscle car for the vociferous alpha behavior to impress others like women or the lower beta poodle Harasho, angie let's take her for a spin shall we yet oh yes my rusky alpha prince we can drive back to the base in the alps where there is the davos meeting in Switzerland and have our coffee and cake together with Klaus and Seb. And what about the vodka? Or all the time you lose as a beta poodle and spending so much time to have a car that serves like a worker's pickup, a family car or whatever. Well, here is the whatever version and then there are the typical alpha beta jobs alpha beta clothes haircuts sporting clubs hobbies all to impress the either alpha surroundings or beta surroundings a sigma just doesn't need all that so can you imagine how much time that leaves for a sigma to think to ponder to evaluate to record to observe to dream to philosophize and to compare so forget 
about those impressive alpha males who are far too busy with their own egos to find a solution and forget the beat up poodles who just feel lost without a collar, without a leash and without the occasional kick in the ass by the master. No, forget about the alpha beta males who will never do anything but watch out for the silent sigma because you never know what's on a cat's mind or when the lone wolf strikes from out of the dark and the strike from the dark can be both physical and metaphysical as metaphysics is the sigma thing metaphysics means the fundamental nature of reality the first principles of being identity and change space and time causality necessity and possibility so i read it for you here the sigma male special made for the end times i can promise you that be aware now so the exclusion game is in fact the worst structure the system can enforce on a sigma male because solitude is exactly what a sigma feeds on as he doesn't need any societal role model interaction therefore society's exclusion game in order to break the willpower of any recalcitrant individual is totally counterproductive in the case of a sigma the exclusion game works on the alpha male because he needs the other dogs around to bark on and the exclusion game also works on the beta male because he needs orders in a given structure but the exclusion game will have a sigma even drift away further from the entire compulsory structures of pharaoh's dictatorship therefore it is only in silent self-contemplation without the outside noises of the daily show around us one can observe the true nature of things also called metaphysics and i read it for you as usual the exclusion game and the sigma equation now what does that mean equation you see there's almost the word equal equal shun equation so that means if you do a comparison with the exclusion game in comparison with sigma they are equal as in equation now let's therefore observe the total discrepancy in between the ukraine narrative and the narrative for the western slaves the same western media apply the hero narrative for the ukraine war of only the real man going into the war kill other human beings defend the ukraine bring the ultimate sacrifice and die whereas pharaoh's narrative by the same western media is exactly the opposite 
where it is even forbidden to defend yourself and even freedom of speech is being punished with life sentences in prison like they do to Julian Assange, to me, Sean Ross, or to the whole catch deniers in the Western total dictatorship. So I read it out loud for you. Dear Ukrainians, the West is a terrible dictatorship. Don't believe their promises. So I'll explain you the uh, picture to the left. You know, it says glory to Ukraine, glory to heroes, a, lot, a bunch of guys with assault rifles, go kill. And to the right, this is the situation in the Western world where a man is just like a doggy doggy, you know, don't do this, do this, behave. You know, everything is forbidden nowadays. You go to prison for everything. And, and you know, and, and don't even, I'm not even talking about like, go kill someone, you know. Where on, the, on this side, the narrative is kill, kill, kill by this very same Western media. I mean, this is schizophrenic. How come the same Western media they say, go kill, kill, kill in the Ukraine. And in the Western world, it's like, shut up, behave, don't do this, and um, do as we tell you. Otherwise, you go to prison for opening up your mouth. So what's going on? I mean, this is really sickening that the very same media and the masters behind it, they have an entirely opposite different narrative for eastern europe as they have for western europe so why why is this you know i mean this is a lie they must be lying how come the same media they tell the people here the entire opposite the other side of the coin almost or literally as they do to these slaves here. Now, how come? Well, we're being manipulated by their lies. They want these people to die. And this part is the result of the Horus matrix. This is already how they want the man to be. And when these men are all dead, their sons, just as it happened in the West through two world wars, their sons of Ukrainians and Russians and Chechnyans, they're gonna be like doggy doggy, and listen to the uh, listen to the women. The man is like uh, Jesus on the cross. He's got his in the West. He's got his hands nailed, so he can't defend himself. He got his feet nailed. He can't run away. He can only move his head and say yes, darling, no, darling. And the witches of the West, they have an alliance with the uh, with the masters, which they made uh, in the castles. So, dear Ukrainians and dear Russians, because the, the same narrative is going to is is being applied to both of you. Don't believe the media and don't believe the West, because this is the end result. So, stop the killing. You know, you must stop it now. Go stop the killing. And again, it's not the Russian people who are bombarding the Ukrainian towns. And it's not the Ukrainian army that bombarded uh, civilians in the Donbass. It's the enemy within who's doing this. And this is the end result they want for humanity. Yeah. So birdie birdie here. They want birdie birdie to be the, the, the head of the nest because the man can see the danger. So they want to keep the man all down through a, a terrible conspiracy uh, by the politicians and uh, by all these she males. They're more male than she, so I call them she males. And um, so 
wakey wakey ukrainians wakey wakey russians uh, wakey wakey chechnyans because your sons are going to be like this this is the horus matrix and of course the narrative by the ruski media is the same hero narrative as in the ukraine like defend mother russia only a real man goes into the war and kills the ukrainian enemy and in fact you know the um, etymology of the word patriarchy here the pink list killers they say use a a, a a direct energy weapon like a phaser to kill the patriarchy and the etymology of the word patriarchy it comes from the latin pater pater and then archos archos is to rule in greek like jean d'arc joan of arc from archos or the um, um the arc of triumph in uh, paris etc it means to rule and the word pater it means father so it does say kill the fathers and this is the horus matrix they know exactly what they're doing kill the fathers and um no father can tell the son you know like life is about this and this and uh, so they could the um the masters can together with the witches they can raise the children exactly how the way they want and uh, make pink list killers out of them or whatever obedient servants and uh, it's it's the same like if you want to make a doggy doggy out of a wolf well you have to kill the fathers right? that, that's how you do it so on the left hand side you can see here the brave Kozak people very brave people big fight big fighters and here is a, a Soviet uh, partisans who fought the Nazis with the German Schmeisser MP40 machine pistol, which they robbed from the Germans. And here you can see Ukraine's soldier of today. So this is the narrative by the very same newspapers. You know, the, it's the hero narrative for Russians and Ukrainians. And the very same newspapers and politicians and justice department and military they have the narrative this is the narrative they have for the west same politicians you know like this because this is the end result of the horus matrix you know they're already satisfied with the man being on his knees on on all his fours and listening to the birdie birdie this this is how it is in the west so the result will be this so i urge you dear eastern europeans and ukrainians and russians stop killing each other because you're gonna lose because there's a third war or a second war it's the war behind or i wanted to say there's a third enemy which is the enemy within like Putin, like Zelensky, like Biden, Macron. It's the enemy within their pharaohs. And they want to recreate the males, not anymore after the image of, of a brave Cossack warrior, but after the image of evil. You know, he's just, just, just a beta poodle. It's nothing. This is the male. You know the brave germanic and celtic tribes this is what's left of them everything is forbidden in the west and now in the ukraine by the same media you can do anything you want for the russians you can rape go ahead you know go go rape some girlies you know and for the ukrainians you can kill and murder and and torture whatever and in the west everything is forbidden so how come the same politicians in the same western media have such a discrepancy you know they're lying it's an agenda behind it can't you see that and i tell you dear eastern europeans when all the ukrainian and russian heroes 
will be dead after the war and after the coming US and allied NATO invasion in both Ukraine and Russia in the last year of the war, your sons have to live like obedient little cowards as in the West, where all the heroes died in two world wars and the Thirty Year War, making their sons through Pharaoh's horrors matrix into obedient little slaves of Pharaoh, of the European witches and of their pink list killers who even openly advocate the killing of the patriarchy, which is an appeal for violence, which is no problem for YouTube or Google and, and the rest of the, of the lot, you know. So again, dear Ukrainians and Russians, I respect the Cossack warriors I very, very much. As I told my Native American fans that we are all tribes, I mean, does, doesn't he look like an, like an Indian, like an Apache or whatever? We are all tribes. That's what I've been telling you. The Maori, even, even the Jaywalkers and the Arabs, we're all tribes. The Germanic tribes, Celtic tribes, we have only one enemy, which is Pharaoh. And the man will be dead, you know. And your boys, your sons will have a, a leash around their necks and standing next to this pink thing here. This is what they want. So what in the end game, there won't be any more man like this tribal man. There won't be any more man that can stand up and, and, and fight evil. You know, when they come with the mark of the beast and there won't be any more men to defend humanity. Well, honestly, you're not going to think that these things here are going to defend humanity, eh? Well, he did. But he killed the wrong ones. You all believed your politicians and you butcher each other. So I, I urge you all, stop the bloodshed and uh, direct your energies upwards towards the enemy within our masters. And America always comes in the last year of the war to finish off the tired and exhausted soldiers who had already been fighting for years as the fresh and well-nourished US soldiers entered the war in 1917 and 1944 at the end of two world wars. It says, always the same strategy of the New World Order US Army as in 1917 and 19. 44. If you don't know your history, you will never understand what they will do next because it's getting so boring. They always use the same techniques, the same strategy, the same tactics, the same agenda. Look, he's got the agenda in his suitcase. Why is a soldier with the suitcase? Oh yeah, the computers, okay. So this picture, the last one, and the following army pictures are from now, 2023 and 2022, with US and NATO troops uh, amassed in Poland and Romania and uh, Slovakia the Baltic Republic, um, they're all prepared. It's um, the clash is coming. So here it says, the New World Order, US Army will finish off the exhausted Russian troop, just as they did with the uh, German troops in 1917 and in 1944. 
uh, in the last years of the war. Same old, same old. Always the same techniques. Because America really is the biggest horizontal New World Order Republican rule in the world. And the second one. Switzerland was the first, but of course they don't have a huge army like this. Though they have the Octagon army all over the world, even inside the US army. So it's always the same people. And um, yeah, I guess World War Three is coming up. Pharaoh's nobility always uses the same technique, just as in 1917 and 1944. And if you see the huge amount of amassed troops at the, well, let's say, Soviet borders, Belarus and Russia, it can't be other then the, uh, they are preparing, or they already have prepared World War III. But don't worry, they're not going to use atomic bombs, though they will use a lot of new weapons, like the, uh, like the pink list killer phases and whatnot. 1917, 1944, and 2023 identical and if you think about it 1917 that was the before last war last year of the war and 1944 was um, the second last year of the war so 2023 is probably also the second last year of the war so the war, World War III, will probably end in 2024. Um, probably also May the 8th, you know, something around there. And then they're going to push us the, um, the chip and the, um, the uh, electronic money and the total control um, system, the, all, the whole evil stuff. So um, I'd say, you know, we got time until uh, 2024. Well, actually, we don't have any more time, but uh, yeah. Again, these are all actual photographs from now. 2023-2022, huge amounts of NATO, US New World Order troops amassed at the uh, Russian-Belarus uh, borders. So, you know, they're not going to fly them back, you know, just having done nothing and ha having had a good time there. Hey, we all know how it goes. So here it says, World War III, 1917, 1944, 2023. It's always the same people. You have to know their agenda. You have to know history. And um, in order to know what they're planning. So now the US NATO New World Order Army being ready and amassed at the Russian and Ukrainian border to do the same as in two world wars. It's always the same technique, people. It says, always last year of the war, when they come with totally fresh troops, and they just finish off the demoralized uh, adversary. It's all a setup, it's all planned, just as it happened in 1917. And then we had right after in 1918, this terrible sort of Spanish flu, uh, which happened probably because of vaccinations, all these soldiers got. 
which had the flu in it and then they passed it on to families and relatives and everyone. And then 1944, the war ended in 1945, here too, the war ended in 1918. There's always the, the, the year just before the end, and now in 2023. It's unavoidable. So if you look at, the, um, at this here and the similarity, the war will probably end in 2024. And then there will be the total control evil system with all they can do against us. Here you can see the Ukrainian uh, Rivnia. I hope I pronounced that right. The uh, 500 Rivnia money in the Ukraine. Here it says uh, Ukraina here. Yeah. And here it says 2006. So do you see something special here in the image? Yeah, look, like on the $1 bill. There's the pyramid and the all-seeing eye, which is a concept of three. And so is the circle. So it says them, our masters, because this is the hierarchy of the pyramid. And... Um, which is them, all going all the way to the top, the alpha here, the first one where Pharaoh is, and at the bottom are we, the people. There should be somewhere the concept of four, but I, I can't really see it. Uh, maybe this one here, if you see it in perspective, like, like it's, it's a square which is like uh, tumbled over in a way. There are, th are four parts of windows here, but that's a bit far, far searched. Um, I don't really see the typical uh, concept of four, but it is there. It's 100% uh, it's here. So the majority of the Ukrainian and Belarusian people are already ready to welcome the US and allied invasion to come and save them from the Russians. Only the Russians aren't ready yet. So therefore, the Putin dictatorship of the Nazi Templars now in 2023 is augmenting their attacks on the Russian people by grabbing Russian men from the streets, stuff them into a uniform and send them to the front in the Ukraine war. I read it for you here. Are you ready to accept the US culture this is what the, the masters think about the Russian people. Are you ready to accept the US and New World Order culture? We'll force you into acceptance, you know, by beating them up. And the New World Order NATO army will liberate Russia. You know, when the Russians, they have really have enough of it. They're standing with their backs against the wall because of the Nazi terror here by the Russian police. And then they're, they're ready to accept everything. And here it says, this is the plan. It's easy. They have always been doing this, people. Just look at history. Then, consequently, they force the Russian conscripts into some barracks, pass on the coordinates to Pharaoh's cannoneers inside the Ukrainian army and blow them to pieces in order to make the Russian people ready in their minds for a US allied invasion to liberate Mother Russia from themselves and the Putin dictatorship 
So I'll read it for you here. The Nazis won the war. They left Germany in rubbles and went to Russia and to America, where they continued their evil deeds. And how is this possible that it can go on and on and on? Because it all comes out of the ancient orders of the Nazi Templars. I'll read it for you here. The Black Prince, so that's Putin, of Octagon Teutonic Knights. And when I had infiltrated in Switzerland the Swiss Octagon, I heard them talk about their Swiss sleeper agent, Mr. Putin, here, by calling him the Black Prince, which is his code. And that's why he's got all his money in Switzerland. He's got his wife and kids living in Geneva because the Knights Templars, they founded Switzerland. And then they went over in the Teutonic Knights who went to the Baltic and they ruled there for another, they did another crusade for another 200 years and they're still ruling there. And Mr. Putin, he is exactly from that area. Of the Teutonic Knights. You have to dig into history to, uh, to understand today's things uh, going on. And it's all a Freemason, pharaonic setup with Putin, Macron, Zelensky, Biden, and the rest playing the game to create a big Western New World Order horizontal pharaonic dictatorship ruled by Octagon and their Swiss base in the Alps. A worldwide dictatorship of little obedient cowards taking orders from witches and pink list killers. When I saw this Makaka primate in a nature documentary, I thought by myself, why is that face and that smile so familiar to me? And when the nature documentary got interrupted by an important news bulletin here in France, it was like a continuation of that nature documentary and seeing all of a sudden all the same faces and all the same smiles of all these politicians in the news bulletin as I saw just before about seduction during the mating season in the animal documentary. So I made this collage for you where it says in French here, macaque sourire pour séduire. It should actually have an accent, but it, I couldn't find it with the capital letters. And it's, it, this means macaque sounds a bit like Macron, doesn't it? It's alliterating with Macron and um, it means the macaque uh, primate. And sourire pour séduire, it means to smile for the seduction. Just as I just saw in the animal documentary about seduction during the mating season. And after that, <laughs> I just couldn't resist the temptation to make myself and yourselves some more charming collages out of the animal world. And here it says in French, le système macaque. It means the macaca primate system. Here it says in French, on est mort de rire. And mort, it means death. Um, I wrote it in capital letters. 
you know, because it's like, you know, it's it's related to death for us. It's serious. And here it means to laugh, which is funny. Well, death isn't funny, you know. So it's quite cynical what it says here. And um, it means, it uh, literally, it says, um, like, we are dead laughing, you know, which is cynical, you know. We, the people, we think it's so funny, but it really, it isn't funny. There's no translation for it directly in English. In English, you would say, um, this is dead funny, you know. And uh, that would be the English equivalent. It's dead funny. And these, there are even more similarities, you know, between the animal world and the polit politician's world. And especially linguistically, as the animal world also gets called the animal kingdom, just as Pharaoh's kingdom ruling over us in real beastly style. Well, isn't that funny? Ace, we say. <laughs>